everybody. Hello and welcome to the stream. So here we are. Uh, we are going to do a three hour stream on Lord of the Rings Online Housing. So uh, Lord of the Rings Online Lotro, it is an MMORPG that is being that you play a character uh, in the world of the Lord of the Rings in Middle Earth. And um, there's all sorts of things you can do. Being an MMO, you can go off and quest and fight things and um, that sort of thing. But there's also a lot of other sides to Lotro. There's festivals where the peoples of all sorts of Middle Earth come together to celebrate, um, kind of set in a, a slightly amorphous uh, time, but a time when maybe they're not being as uh, concerned about what's going on in the outer world as maybe it would be otherwise. Um, but then there's also this whole area of housing that happens here in Lord of the Rings Online. So you can, in the game, go and get a house. Now, what does that mean? Oh, first, before we get too far, let me introduce myself. I'm Little Redhead, and I have been playing Lord of the Rings Online for three years as of this month. Um, I got into the idea of, you know, being able to play games with people that I know um, online together and really just fell in love with, with the whole place. Uh, I love the, um, the gameplay and the atmosphere in the game. The players are, uh, take care of each other. Um, the, uh, the landscapes are just beautiful. The, the quest lines are well written. Um, there's just so much about the game that I, I really love. But really my niche over, over the last few years has become really enjoying the festivals and enjoying the housing. Um, so I participated in Extra Life where I was raising money for children's hospitals. And um, a goal was set that if I raised $500 that I would do a three hour stream just about talking about low tour housing. So here we are. All right, so yes, I'm Little Redhead and I will be your tour for the next three hours on Lotro Housing. All right, so let's get started. Now, when I first started playing uh, Lotro, I, I, I joined a kinship and the leader was like, hey, you know, you can help decorate the kin house if you want to. And I was like, well, that's that's really sounds awesome. Um, now, I had no idea what that meant. <laughs> uh, it was brand new to the game, brand new to housing, all of that. Well. So in my mind, I was like, you know, so does each kin member get their own bedroom? Like, what if everybody wants to use the kitchen at the same time? What if, you know, like, what, is there a bathroom? Like, how does this work? Okay, put all that aside. That is not what basically a house is. What you're looking at is basically think of, do you, do you ever do those dioramas in school where you take like an old box, like a cardboard box or another small box, and you create a, like a scene using small things? Um, yeah, I can't, the camera keeps moving. Um, so so you've, you've got, you know, your empty box, just a plain empty box. And you try to, um, you know, you put, you place various things in there and you decorate it in a certain way. That's really what we're talking about. That's what we're talking about for what a Lotro house is. It is an empty box. And in that box, you can place a couple of things. It's got a floor and it's got some walls and it does have a ceiling too. And so within that space, there's certain places that you can put things and there's certain types of things you can put. Like you, you can put things on the floor, but you can't put the floor things on the walls, for example. So, um, so that's what Lotro housing is. Um, oh, hey. <laughs> oh, somebody says not streaming yet. I am on, um, let's see. Make sure that I am live for you all. Yeah, I should be on my personal channel and on the um, Lotro stream channel, which is the official Lord of the Rings online channel. Yeah. Uh, you're on both. Okay, awesome. Okay, uh, if I need to send some links out, I can definitely do that. Oh, thanks. There's a link right there for me. Let me pop that over to somebody else. We had some excited folks too. So, all right, let's turn that down. Okay, so here we are. We've got little boxes. We've got little rectangles, right? Um, and we're going to get ourselves one of those rectangles and see what to do. Now, um, oh my gosh, and people can get so creative in how to decorate those little boxes. Um, uh, yeah, no problem. Double check Lojo stream if you get a chance. 
Awesome. Okay, so Lord of the Rings Online started back in April, uh, April 24th, 2007. So about six months later, October 25th, 2007, with a patch that came out, what was that patch? Oh, I don't have the number. Um, but about six months after the game was released, basically, um, they came out with Lotro Housing. So the game had been around about six months and then they came out with this. And so what it was is there's four different homesteads. Hold on just a second. He's not seeing it on Lotro stream. Okay. <laughs> ah, technology, right? Sounds great. Thank you. Okay. Um, so let's talk about those four initial homesteads. So there are, there was, let me see. So I put together a little thing here and hopefully I can make my little magic work here. Ah, there we go. Okay, so there's four original homesteads. We've got uh, the Bree Land, which is um, based on the races of men. And then you've got Falathorn Homesteads, which is based on the, um, the, the elves. You've got the Shire Homesteads, which is based on hobbits. And then you've got Thorin's Hall Homesteads, which are based on the dwarves. Now, each one of these neighborhoods has a different set of houses. So you have standard houses, which are a smaller two-room house. And then you have the um, deluxe houses, which are generally a three-room house. Oops, hang on, let me move myself off of the Shire. There you go. <laughs> you missed me for a minute, but you can still hear me. Um, so then you have, right, so you have standard houses, you have deluxe houses, and then you have also kinship houses. And the kinship houses can only be purchased by kinships. Okay, so let's take a little bit of a closer look. Let me go back to that, um, to the standard housing here. So the first thing you've got is you have your small two room houses. And these have, um, basically you walk in, there's a door and you have a room that you've walked into. And then um, next to that room, there's a second room. And you can decorate those two rooms. That's what you've got. These houses tend to cost uh, between, hang on, I have the numbers here in front of me. They tend to cost between 900 silver and one gold and 150 silver. So they are absolutely available to somebody who is, say, free to play. Because you have a gold cap of two, so you can easily get one of these houses for less than two, right? In fact, let me pop into a neighborhood and pop into a house and I will show you live as well. One of the Shire houses. Now, interestingly, I don't know if you can see this on the screen, yeah. So you'll notice that the Breland house and the Thorns Hall homestead have the same layout. So I find that really interesting. So, all right, so let me close that off and bring me back in. Oops, let me put my camera back up there for you. Okay, so here we are at a uh, at a Shire Homesteads single room uh, single small house. So this is one of these standard houses. Let me move that over to that close enough. All right. So when you arrive at your house, you've got you'll see there's a sign out front if the house is for sale. Um, and you can click on that sign and it'll tell you a little bit about the house. For example, this tells you the address, tells you the neighborhood, and what which um, which homesteads are you in, Shire, Fallathorn, Thorns Hall, etc. It tells me this is a standard house. It tells me how much it's going to cost to buy it. It tells me that there's upkeep. And there is upkeep every week on houses. Hey, there's Aubrey, welcome. Um, uh, and, but you can set that up ahead of time to pay that housing for you. And I'll show you that here in a moment. All right, so, but first I just really wanna show you the house. 
So let's go inside and take a look at the floor plan. Hmm? What's up? <laughs> My camera um, uh, ball joint seems to have gone out of uh, adjustment, so I keep having live adjustments happening on the side here. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> okay. We're going to call that good for now. For the next five minutes. For the next five minutes. Okay, so you noticed I've walked in, and here's this little teeny space, right? We have this one room right here. And I can look around, and I can see what this room looks like. And then I can go into the next room. Now, each of the different houses, the different races of houses, are styled in a way when just like the 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 shoe boxes that we have are styled in a way that is in the flavor of that race so for example with hobbits we have this kind of uh herringbone flooring we've got these cute little um fireplaces that have a bunch of uh, stonework about them we have the beams that have some cute little decorations within them and then we've kind of got like a white plaster with some wood down at the bottom. Um, all of your Shire homesteads are going to have that kind of look about them. And on the outside, you'll see that it's got a similar sort of thing going on outside as well. So each of the different neighborhoods has a different look to them. So you see how we've got like a little planter of flowers there. Each of the houses will have a mailbox out front, and it'll be styled in the style of that neighborhood. We've got our round door. We've got our rounded windows. We've got our sloped roofs. We've got, it uh, looks, looks to be like a thatch or a grass on top. Um, and it is nighttime in the game, so we've got these you know nice little lights that have all come on. So this is a typical thing that they do in the game for the different types of houses. So for example, let me pull back up. Um, here we go. So you can see these are the standard houses for the four different neighborhoods. And you can see, so like with the Shire Homesteads, the one we were just looking at, in fact, it's a very similar house to the one we were just looking at. It's not exactly the same address, though, I can tell you that. Um, but you can see how they are very similar from one to the next. So if, like if you look up in the top corner, you'll see the Breland Homesteads. It's got a lot of kind of a darker um, stonework. It's got the thatched roof. It's got a lot of the browns, and it has a lot of um, kind of exposed wood kind of a look. Also, the mailbox is a little bit more angular. It's probably made out of metal. If you look at the Falathorn hom homesteads, those are the ones based on elves. And um, it has those kind of high, sweeping, rounded corners, a lot of rounded edges, um, and in fact, uh, you'll see that the map for the um, for that house looks rather weird. It's because it has an upstairs. So that big curved spot you're seeing there is actually a staircase that takes you to a room that's on top. So their rooms are basically, you have the, the entry room is the big room, just like here. And then your small room, instead of being next to it, is above it. Uh, but otherwise, it is pretty much the same. Also, the, the walls are rounded inside on some places, so it does make decorating a little bit different. Um, Thorns Hall Homesteads, though, you can see in the bottom corner, has it goes back to the similar line uh, as like the Shire Homesteads and the Breland Homesteads, where you've got the two rooms are on the same ground level together. Um. <laughs> sure. So there we go. So you can kind of see how each of the housing areas has a little bit different. Oh, and Thorns Hall, we didn't mention that it's all underground. And so you can see they've got, um, you can see the carved out pieces of it. You can see that the, the houses themselves are very stonework in their look as well. Um, okay, so a number of things that I wanna talk about. One of the things is that when you want to purchase a house, you have the ability to own one of these classic style houses. You can own a standard house, which are the smaller ones, and those are the ones that cost around one gold. You could own a deluxe house, which are these bigger ones. 
and they range from like six and a half to about eight and a half, well, eight-ish gold. So those are a little harder to do if you're free to play. You probably have to become like a, a premium or a VIP for a month and then buy your house and, <laughs> and go from there. Um, but you'll notice they're a little bigger. Notice the maps on those, and I'll put my camera out of the way for a minute, is you'll notice the maps on those are bigger. You've got not only just your initial entry room, uh, but you have not one, but two side rooms. And again, the elves have one that goes upstairs, but it is the same number of rooms. And each of these types of houses has the same number of places where you can decorate somewhere within the house. The hooks, they're called decoration hooks, and they may be located slightly different between one house to the next, but they all have the same number of places that you can decorate on the inside and on the outside. So every deluxe house should have the same number of decoration hooks, regardless of whether you buy it in Breland or Falathorn or the Shire or in Thorin's Hall. Now remember, this was the initial housing that came out in 2007, and this still exists in the game today, and you can still go and purchase you know, a home in the game today. That is not a problem. Those are all still there. Um, yeah, interestingly, with the mailboxes, so when you buy a house, you have the ability to set permissions to allow people to do a lot of different things at your house. So let's talk about home ownership for just a moment. Let me go ahead and go back to my camera and we're gonna close that for the moment. Okay, so for example, I own a house. I own a couple of houses actually. So let's, be, let's clarify that. So I have opened up my housing panel and what you'll see on here is the, num the houses that I either own or have some sort of um, ownership of, such as a kin house. Um, everybody who's a member of a kin has um, the kin house listed in their housing panel. So even though you may not own the house, you have some ability to do stuff with it. Okay, so you'll see Six Martel Court. It tells me my neighborhood, which is Whitwich, and it tells me that it's in the Shire Homestead. So we know that I'm in the Shire. And we know that my house is a Shire house. It tells me that it's a deluxe house, and it shows me which of my characters is the owner of that house. When you go to buy a house, the character that you are on when you buy that house is the owner of that house. Um, and they will be the owner of that house in perpetuity. Like, you cannot transfer a house from one character to another. We'll talk about abandoning houses there in just a second. But first I wanna talk about you know owning the house before we talk about getting rid of it. Okay, so um, within my house, so I went and I went to either one of those signs, the standing in front like we talked about, or I went to a housing broker. I'll show you a housing broker in a moment. And I said, I wanna buy this house. And so then I clicked on it and I said, buy the house. And it went cha-ching and took my money. And then I now own the house. When you buy a house, you get a travel skill that allows you to go straight to that house. So, boom, boom, boom. under your skills, um, what's it called? Home? I just, um, I have it already. I use a, a plugin. Here it is. Travel skills. Okay, that's true. We could just go down to travel skills. Although I am a hunter, so I have a lot of travel skills. We're gonna get rid of that one, and we'll get rid of that one, and that one, and that one. Oh, okay. Sure, we could do it that way. Uh, collapse all, and then travel skills. Okay, so uh, when, you, oh, when you purchase a house, you're gonna get this button right here that says travel to personal house. It has, it shares the cooldowns that you have with other travel to skills. So remember, if you want to be able to move from one place to another faster within Middle Earth, your initial um, skills come with a one hour cooldown. But you can buy cooldowns of 30 minutes and 35 minutes and basically get all of your traveling skills, your travel to, your guide to, or not guide to, uh, your, there's, there's a, they have different categories of travel skills. Um, milestone skills are a different category. So you can get all of those down to five minutes, and that's what I've done. So that's why you see when you look at my travel to personal house, I can go there every five minutes, which is pretty cool. But by default, it is one hour. But like I said, it shares the cooldown with your other travel to skills. So when you bring your travel to skills down, it will follow that. 
Um, so that will take me directly to my personal house. You also get the ability to uh, go in and out of your house. You have then also a permissions panel and a maintenance panel that you get for that house. So under your permissions panel, it will by default have um, slots listed as the owner, that's you, and you have everything checked, you can do everything. Also, all of your other characters on that account, on that server, are technically owners and able to do all of those things. Um, so you don't have to go in and modify that. That automatically happens for you, even though a different character is technically the owner. Okay, now there's also a default for everyone, which is usually nothing. <laughs> so you can adjust the permissions on that. And then if you're in a kinship, you should be able to adjust the members, uh, the kinship just as a whole as to what they can do. And then you can specify very particular people whether they can do or not do certain things at your house. So for example, I have added two specific characters that are not me, that are not my account, uh, and given them very specific permissions. So um, for everyone, I have given them the permission to visit. So you can come, go in and out of my house and look around and see what all I have done. Uh, housing storage though, I have, every house comes with a storage chest and you can store things inside of that chest. It's additional storage, it's fantastic, love it. And you can um, increase the size of that. It comes by default with something like 25 spaces. And then over time, you can add uh, more spaces by paying at first in-game money. So uh, like 27 gold, I think the first one is nine gold and then 27 and then it goes up from there. Uh, but then it reaches a point where you can't increase the size anymore for in-game gold, uh, but you can increase it for mithril coins. So uh, I haven't done that yet. I think it only gives you an additional five or 25 for the mithril coins. Uh, I haven't spent a lot of time with that because I just uh, find other ways to manage my storage. I have a lot of stuff. But anyway, so my housing storage, so for everyone in the world, so everybody in the game, if they come to my house, they can visit, but they cannot get into my housing chest. I have not provided that permission to the world. Now, in terms of maintenance, I have given permission to everybody in the world to pay my maintenance if they would like to. Uh, I'll, I'll, mention, I'll come back and show you what that looks like here in a moment. To decorate, no. Not everybody in the world can go and decorate my house. People at my kinship, nope, they can't either. They can visit, but they can't, they can't decorate my house for me. Now, I've given specific permission though to a couple of people to decorate my house uh, because they had some items that I wanted them to put in my house. And you know, I'm married to one of them, so I was like, that's fine. <laughs> you can have permission to do stuff at my house. Um, now, use decorations though. Sometimes you'll find that there is a decoration that you can interact with. And so uh, if you check use decorations, everybody who has that permission, so again, we're looking at the everybody uh, option here, everybody has the permission to use the decorations at my house. So maybe if there's like the mine cart, would you click on it and it goes squeak, 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 you know, um, you can click on it and it'll do that. As opposed to if I did not have use decorations checked, people would not be able to touch it. They would touch it and say, you don't have permission to do that, I think. Then the last thing you have there is manage permissions. And that allows you to do to interact with this um, screen. So for example, Affidil has the ability to come visit my house, can get into my storage chest, can pay my maintenance, can decorate, um, can use my decorations, but they don't have permission to, as you can see, that one is not checked, to manage my permissions. So they can't come in here and just willy-nilly go and change things. Now, if I wanted to change that, all I have to do is check this box, and then I hit apply, and now they have permission to come in and modify my permissions. I'm, gonna, I'm okay with that, actually. Um, I know Affido quite well. Okay, so I wanted to show you what it's like to use somebody's stuff. So, what's up? Oh, okay. Actually, um, well, so for example, when somebody has uh, the crates out in front of their house and you want to uh, touch those, they have to have use permissions put on there. That's all. Okay, let me show you the maintenance panel. Yeah? Oh, hold on a moment. 
Phobias? Yeah. Okay. Just the one thing. Sure. Playing around with technical stuff here in the background again. Hi, Kim. I have this. Okay. Fill in for Kim. Is there any feedback? Sure, sure, sure. Oh, sorry. Apparently, I was stuttering a little bit. Okay. So, sure, sure. Okay, so let me show you the maintenance um, panel for the moment. Let me go ahead and minimize this other option as well. Okay, so the maintenance panel, when you're clicked on a house, you click on the maintenance panel, and it shows you your housing upkeep information. So, uh, for example, I have prepaid a bunch of money. And so it's just going to keep pulling from that money that I have paid ahead of time uh, up until the point where I get a lockout date. So currently my lockout date on my house is April 4th at 5.11 in the morning. <laughs> if I don't pay my upkeep, if my upkeep goes into arrears at that point, the first thing they're going to do, uh, hello, Hypatia, welcome. So the first thing they would do is they would send my character an email. The, they're going to send a message to the owner character. So not all of my characters are going to receive this mail. Only the owner character will receive the mail. And they'll get a message saying, hey, in one week, you're going to run out of maintenance. And then a week goes by, and then it comes up and it says, you've run out of maintenance. You're locked out of your house. So your house is still there. All the stuff is still there. Uh, it just sits there until you actually go and pay your upkeep. Or if it gets to uh, a certain point, and I believe that is six months after you have not touched the house, not paid your upkeep, it just sat there, then it goes away and it's available for somebody else to sell. All the stuff that was in your house and in your yard uh, goes into escrow. So uh, there's an escrow broker, but if you go and buy a new house, all of those things will show up into the chest at your new house. Now, another nice thing about it, though, is that if you uh, find yourself in that situation, well, if you abandon a house, and I assume it's the same if, you, if it goes into arrears as well, that um, the next house that you buy, um, if you have done any expansions on your house chest, that will continue, that will follow you. So that's really nice. So, you know, all of that money that you may have put into expanding your house chest will follow you to the next house. So right now, what I could do so for example, you can see that my current lockout date is April 4th. Now I could pay this amount right here, 165 silver, and it would push my lockout date by one week. So I do that, boom. And see, now it's pushed out by one week. Okay, but what if I'm like, you know, I really like to kind of take care of that more than one week at a time, right? Well, you can slide this little slider and notice how the dates here keep changing and the amount the upkeep that I'm depositing keeps changing. So I keep slide, 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 slide. So I could go all the way to as far as uh, July 11th and pay that upkeep right now. Or maybe I just go, eh, sure, I'll just go here to May. Boom. Ta-da. Now it's gone back. The slider's back here. Now notice I st only can go, though, until July 11th. So it only allows you to push out six months from where you are. Um, but it's a nice thing that you can just do that once every six months or so, maybe check it every five months and just, you know, forget about it. So the cool thing is if somebody comes to my house, when you walk onto somebody's house, when you walk onto somebody's yard, let me go to somebody's yard. Hmm? <laughs> I'm going to go to um, one of our kin members' houses, actually, that I can pay maintenance for. I think we just upped our maintenance, so I don't think there's going to be anything to pay, but we'll go take a look. We will go take a look. Do, 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 do. Hmm? Okay. Okay, so here I am at a house of one of my kin members, and she has in her yard a map that allows you to travel. Uh, to the war room for the War of the Three Peaks. And then she also has these two crates here, these two ingredient crates. Now, she has, in her housing panel, given me permission to do a bunch of things at her house. So I'm at her house. So you'll notice I, in my um, housing panel, 
her house isn't listed. It's not Six Myrtle Court, it's not the Kin House at Brookbank Street, and it's not the Premium House at Two Ridge Road. Her house doesn't show up in my housing panel, but I do have permission here, I know, because we've talked about it. So if I'm at her house, I am able to do the things that I'm allowed to do. For example, she's given me the permission to decorate. So I could click the little, um, do you see it up here on the radar, up in the top corner? There's uh, on the kind of the like around you know, seven, eight o'clock on there, there's the toggle decoration mode. It looks kind of like a, a bouquet of flowers. That's how you turn decoration mode on and off to be able to decorate at a house. Now, if I want to pay her uh, maintenance, that's under housing management. So I would click the little icon that looks kind of like a house. Actually, it looks kind of like a rectangle with a triangle on top, but it's a house. So you'll notice this looks very, very much like that other panel we were just looking at. Gives me information about the house. Second tab shows me the maintenance information. And the third tab shows me the permissions. And that's about this house specifically. So that's kind of interesting. So you can see that we can, at her house, I can pay upkeep. Boom, I just moved it forward by a week. So we're able to go and do that as many times as we want. We could do it up to three more times to push it out for six months from now. So anybody who has permission to come and do maintenance on this house, which she might have said it to everybody, uh, is the whole world come and pay the maintenance to keep this house going. So that's something that I actually recommend to people is when you get a house and you go in and play around with the permissions, set the permissions to, for your kinship the way you want people in the kin to be able to access your house. Set the permissions the way you want everybody in the world to be able to come and visit your house. Um, I personally am a fan of letting people come visit my house and letting people uh, pay maintenance on my house. And that's the third thing that I do is I recommend to people that they allow maintenance to be paid by anybody. Um, because you never know, you might be, you know, on vacation or maybe, you know, you're not in the game for a while, maybe your computer dies, whatever. Um, and you're like, oh, I really don't want to lose my house. Can somebody go and pay maintenance for me? That would be great. <laughs> um, so that's something you can do. It's a pretty cool thing. Okay, so we talked about what it's like to own a house. Let's talk about talking to somebody about buying a house. Uh, I don't know how to throw it over to you. Okay, sure. Okay, so I'm going to go to my house maintenance panel. So I've opened up my houses maintenance. Okay, wonder if it'll show up live. Somebody's going to pay maintenance in my house right now. Yep, currently it lets you go up to seven times. Okay. So I'm gonna, okay, so I'm going to close that, and we'll take a look at it. Now it says six, because somebody just paid a week for me. <laughs> so it doesn't, it didn't send me a message. It doesn't send you a message or anything. Um, the only time you get a message about your maintenance is if you are like running low, basically. Like if there's, uh, if, if you're a week from being locked out of your house, then you'll get a message about it. Um, aside from that, it doesn't warn you, you know, or it doesn't tell you, hey, somebody paid your stuff. Uh, none of that kind of stuff. Okay, so I have just left the neighborhood. I'm actually out here in the landscape. I'm in the Shire. So the four different homesteads, uh, these classic original homesteads, are located in the landscape. Like you can ride up to them, just, you know, ride as you're riding around. So the one in the Shire is um, down here, down at the bottom, kind of by, yeah, down there by my face. Uh, if you wanted to check out the Bree Land one, we'll go to Bree Land, and you go outside of Bree Town, and you keep going like you're going to go towards the Lone Lands, and it's just south of the Midgewater Marshes there. And again, you can just ride right up to it. Now, if you want to find the houses of elves and dwarves, they're both located in Arid Lewin. Um, the Falathorn homesteads are located not that far from actually the portal to the Shire outside of it. But you get there, like you can go from Dooland and go across the bridge, across the river there. And then um, it's not too far uh, past that over on the side. And if you're looking for the dwarves, it's right up by Thorns Hall. Uh, you just ride a little bit to the west and then you'll find the Thorns Hall um, homesteads over there. So the 
the homesteads, all four of these, you can, like I said, ride up to out in landscape. And when you do, you're gonna come across a person, at least for these four, you're gonna come across a person who's standing outside and they are a housing broker. Now, for a long time, the housing brokers, you could find them here. Um, there'd be one located somewhere. So for example, I think Andy himself is also located in Tuckboro. You know, you might just run across him. And sometimes they'll have the thing like, um, where they want you to go and help build the homestead and all that thing. So you, you know, you can get quests that will send you out in this direction as well. So, uh, excuse me. So when you get there, you can talk to the housing broker and the housing broker will tell day. you, can I help you which houses something? are available for purchase in the neighborhood, uh, in the homesteads that they uh, are in charge of. So let's get a little technical here. This is the Shire homesteads. These are the homesteads of the Shire. Within that, you have, let me pull up um, the maps. Oh, I've squished it, so I cannot read. Hold on just a moment. And I've, I've forgotten what they call it. We did, I put we put together a bunch of files last night and now I all of a sudden just forgot the names of them. Um, a neighborhood map. What's the neighborhood? Where is it? What's, what's it called? No. Oh. We have a map. Oh, maybe it's this one. There we go. Cool. Haha. <laughs> okay. So, um, when you are looking to buy a house, this is the neighborhood. So, if you are looking to buy a house in Breland, um, that's the neighborhood up at the top corner there. That's what the Breland neighborhood looks like. If you're looking to buy a house in the Shire, that's what the neighborhood is going to look like. You know, so each neighborhood has its own each type of neighborhood, each, so the Breland neighborhood, the Fallathorn neighborhood, the Shire neighborhood, the Thorns Hall neighborhood, looks exactly like this. When you go to your house and you look at the neighborhood map, that's the map you're gonna get. It's gonna look exactly like these. Now, there are, oh, I did the math, hang on, like 10, 10 of the standard houses, like, six or eight of the deluxe houses and then four of the kin houses in each one of these neighborhoods. Now, do some quick math. There's a lot more players than that. So how does that work? Well, <laughs> what they do is they take this neighborhood and they copy it over and over and over and over again. So it becomes an instance. So just like you're going into like, you know, a skirmish, an instance, that kind of thing. Um, you go through your portal and then you're in your version of that. So that's how they manage having so many different um, houses within the game that players can then buy over and over again. So, for example, I might own um, six Myrtle Court. And my friend might also own six Myrtle Court. But how does that work? Well, it works because we have different uh, neighborhoods within the Shire homesteads. So I own Six Myrtle Court in Witwitch. She owns Six Myrtle Court in Adernotch. So it's a different instance. And it's cool because um, like all the people who own houses, all the people who are there in Adernotch at the same time see each other. Like you're all there in the instance together. Uh, so it's a great way to you know gather with people. You can have parties. Um, like our, uh, I'm in a kinship. Oh, thank you. 16 standard, 10 deluxe, and four kinship. I have it in my document, but I don't want to pull it up. <laughs> um, so yeah, so it's a great way to like get your entire kinship together and have, you know, gatherings. You just tell everybody to gather at, you know, the, the kin house at such and such address in such and such neighborhood. So when I'm talking to the neighborhood broker here, he's gonna tell me all the houses that are available for sale in the neighborhoods that have available houses. This is not the entire list of all of the Shire Homestead's neighborhoods. This is a list of all of the Shire Homestead's neighborhoods that have houses for sale. <laughs> so you're looking for a retirement borough at Three Wending Way, 
but all are gone on the server you play. Should you rethink your retirement plans or will another neighborhood pop up one day? <laughs> I love it, thanks Aubrey. Um, so yes, so what the, what SSG, kind of stepping back and looking at it from the developer and you know, uh, standpoint, what they do is once uh, enough of the neighborhoods are sold out or a single type of house is all sold out, they will open up new neighborhoods. Now in this case, for example, you'll see that there are still some deluxe houses available. So this first column, the kind of darker looking houses, those are the standard houses. And then the second column is the deluxe houses. And then the third column are the kinship houses. So you can see like in Adernotch, there are two standard houses available. There's one deluxe house and there's one kin house. And if I click that little plus, it's gonna show me their actual addresses and their purchase cost. Now, as, uh, as Avery was saying, they're looking for Wending Way. Um, so unfortunately, the best way to do that is if you know when, uh, if you know three Wending Way is a, now you have to uncheck the ones you're not looking for. So we know it's not a kinship house, for example. Uh, three Wending Way, is that a deluxe house? I can't, oh, you might, Wending, Wending Way, yeah. Oh yeah, 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 okay. Um, so then it shows you all of the neighborhoods that have a deluxe house available and you kind of have to just, you know, click and check and see if any of those have the one you're looking for. Wait, is Wending Way, is that a, is that a standard house? Yes. Oh, whoops, let me switch. Oh, it's Sandar's house. Okay. So, oh, that's a great house because that's right near the center. The only thing I don't like about it is it's a small house. So, yeah. So, for example, I'm now looking at all of the neighborhoods, I'm looking only at the small houses, the standard houses. And as you can see, one wending way is not showing up. So, of course, our friend here is going to be very disappointed. Yeah, I'm still not seeing it. It's interesting too, because the way they sort, you'll notice, is by number. It's not by street. So it's one chalk, one harrow, one myrtle, two brook bank, two harrow, two myrtle, two pleasant, two wending, and so on. It's kind of funny. Um, so there's two things that will make your house show up. Um, if somebody sells it or abandons it or is um, uh, somehow loses it for, you know, for non-payment. Um, or if it gets to a point where, say, all of the standard houses are pretty much sold out. Now, as you saw, there are a lot of standard houses still there. So a third thing you can do is go onto the forums uh, and kind of get their attention and basically say, hey, I would love to purchase Three Wending Way, but there are no neighborhoods available um, at this time. Will you be opening up any new neighborhoods? And what they'll do is they will basically come and they will look at the inventory um, and go, well, you know, there's plenty of other inventory. I'm sure you can find something else. Or they'll be like, oh gosh, yeah, I can see your point. Here, let's open up another neighborhood. Uh, that happened to like, well, that happened here on um, Treebeard server, which is where I'm showing you these things because this is a newer server. And so as things got sold out, you could watch and like every couple days, another neighborhood would show up because things would get sold out very quickly or get close to sold out. Uh, it also happens when the premium neighborhoods, um, when the premium homesteads first show up because yeah, people go in, they snap up the good ones and then you know it, it, it's waiting for more of the larger houses to show up. So that would be my advice is one, keep checking on a regular basis because for example, with this server, there are a lot of people who started playing six months ago. Their houses are going into escrow, so their houses are gonna start coming available. So you might get lucky. Um, that's what we are doing with our neighborhood, for example. Um, our neighborhood is Witwitch. You'll notice that Witwitch is not listed because there are no houses available for sale in Witwitch right now. Every single house in our neighborhood is owned by somebody. But some of them have been locked for non-payment already. So, it, it, we're, we're kind of waiting to see if that person comes back and can get their house back, you know, into payment, or if um, if it's just going to go into arrears and uh, and then we'll just have another um, kinship member snap it up. <laughs> um. mm. So let's see. Uh, let me keep going. 
So, so that that's that would be my advice on on that. Where if you're looking for a very specific house and there's none on that server um, at that time, is one keep an eye out and see if something comes up. That happened with the island um, kinship houses we're going to talk about here in a few minutes over in Belfalos, and um, that those were snapped up pretty quickly. And so you got to try and get the developers to open up another neighborhood. So you can get that or yeah, go onto the forums and um, ask, you know, pretty please cherry on top. Could you open up a neighborhood so maybe I can snap up the house that I want. <laughs> um, yeah, the, and that's the thing, too, though, is I really like the Hobbit um, neighborhoods because um, each neighborhood has a different kind of flavor to it. And I. Um, this one has kind of like a, a hill, hilly sort of thing, and it's really hard to fall down and hurt yourself. As opposed to like in Thorin's Hall, it's really easy to fall down and hurt yourself. In Breeland, there's definitely some places where you can fall. In fact, probably the one person, the one where um, Hypatia mentioned, they chose a Bree home because uh, being center, close to the central place was easy for them. So um, I wanted to show you all the town centers, for example. Um, there we go. Let me put my map out of the way. Make them out of the way. So all neighborhoods have a town center where you've got some of the various um, amenities. So you've got um, you'll have like a, um, a vault person. You'll have a far ranging stable master. You'll have. Um, um, a skirmish person. So you've got a whole bunch of NPCs that hang around in the middle of town, what I call the middle of town. It's not always in the center, uh, but what I call kind of like the, the middle of all the commerce. Um, so being near that can be really advantageous. For example, I uh, am a VIP player. There's an NPC called Wenda Cranesbill, and she gives me this wonderful little packet of stuff every every time I go and talk to her. So I like going and having the ability to go talk to her very easily every day or every other day. Okay, so I wanted to show you real quick what happens when you are at a, um, the entrance to a set of neighborhoods, to a homesteads, and you just walk up to the portal. Boom, it's the neighborhood gate, and it's gonna show you all of the neighborhoods that exist, including the ones that are sold out. So that's one way to get to a house that um, maybe in a neighborhood that sold out, like maybe somebody you know is having a party and you want to go and you know and, and get there, um, but how do you get there if the houses are sold out? Well, you can go to the gate. This is one way, and um, just walk walk in straight from the door. Now you'll notice uh, there's little stars here, so I can star a neighborhood. I can star up to I think it's how many can you do? There we go, uh, five. You can do five neighborhoods. And then when you click the little star at the top, it'll just show you those five that you have already starred. So it's a nice way to, um, if you are going to the same neighborhoods over and over again, it's a nice way to, uh, to, to get to that list very quickly. So now you'll notice it shows uh, Witwitch here because I have a house that I own and I have my kin house there. So I have um, two you know, reasons that I might want to go to Witwitch, and it's letting me know, oh, hey, look, there you are. There's your Six Myrtle Court, your deluxe house, and there's for Brookbank Street, your kinship house. So, sure, I will go into Witwitch, and boom, and then it automatically pops me in, and now I'm inside the neighborhood. And again, I can look at the neighborhood map, and you can see every single Shire neighborhood is going to look exactly like this. So you've got, you know, Wending Way over there. You've got Chalk Road over here. You've got Brookbank Street. You've got Harrow Street or Harrow Road. You've got Myrtle Court. One of Myrtle Court's one of my favorites. And you've got Pleasant Street over here. And then this area here is that center of town that I was talking about. Now, like I say, it is not centered on this map. If it was centered, it would be like right here in the middle of the water. Um, but this is where I kind of consider the center or the heart of the, of the town. And so a lot of people like to have their houses very close to that, that heart, close to that center. And I absolutely understand that. Okay, so let's see. Okay, so I wanted to do a couple little tours of 
houses in general, of specific types of houses. So now that we've kind of talked a little bit about um, the fact that there were originally four different styles of houses, and there were um, neighborhoods for, there are neighborhoods for each of those. So let's go take a quick little tour of a couple of these, but kind of virtually. So, what do I need to do? Oh, I need to dung click that. Okay, so here is a Brie land house. We're gonna start in Brie. And here is a small, oh, actually, let me, well, we talked, we showed this a little bit. Let me bring this back up again. So the classic, there we go. So Brie land houses all have this kind of look. They all have this, this uh, wood, right? They've got the wooden beams. They've got kind of like the plaster, um, the thatched roofs. And you'll see that even the small the standard houses have that same look as well as the deluxe houses. And you can see how it gets bigger, not just on the outside, but also you see the inside there. And then you can see the kinship houses again uh, from the outside, it looks bigger. And you can see the floor plan there, how it, again, uh, gets larger. You come in, there's a small room, and then you walk into a bigger room, and then there's another side room, and then there's a set of staircases that you can go up to and go all the way to the top. And then you've got your neighborhood commons, as it were, or your town, heart of the town, uh, as I like to think of it. So that's what uh, a Breland neighborhood's going to look like. So let me do you a quick tour. So this is, I have just stepped inside in this image, inside a, um, a Breland standard house. It's one of the small houses as we've talked about. I'll bring it back in. Hmm? You like that? Ta -da. Um, we have decorated the floor on that house. Uh, that's some dwarven floor decoration, I believe. And then we've decorated the walls uh, with a bunch of various um, pictures that we put up. It's, it's the pictures that you use for, um, um, for the, the collection deed. Hmm? Cartographer. The cartographer collection deed, yeah. Oh. Um, so again, this is a two room house. So from here, maybe scoot back a little bit. We walked in and you'll see there's a door. Uh, a little bit, a little kitty corner ahead of us there. So here we are looking through that door now, and you can see the next room. And in that next room, there is, I've put a bench out, and let me move my face out of the way. You can see there's a bench by the fire, and then you can see there's a bench and a, um, and a table there together. The small houses don't have a huge, huge amount of um, decorating hooks. Uh, that didn't use all of them, but that used most of them. <laughs> so just as a heads up that if you uh, want to get into the decorating game, a standard house might not be quite big enough for you. Just FYI. Okay, now let's take a look at a deluxe house in the in Bree, uh, in Bree land. <clears throat> so here we have <laughs> a deluxe house with an interestingly decorated yard. We, uh, we spent some time hanging out with the Ents and spent some time in Fangorn and I was delighted to uh, have gotten a couple of those trees. So I said, hey, they're going in my yard. And I love how uh, I was able to drag them quite close to the edge of my property. And so it looks like they are, you know, working on, on, uh, on their conquest. Yes, if the, if the decoration is big enough, it does uh, have the ability to encroach on other things, as you can see. Um, okay, so let's go to the next slide here. So here we are, we've moved. So I'm gonna, we're gonna go around behind the side of, the, of our snowy, uh, snowy guy there. And you can see the front of the house and there's a pond, uh, there's a chair over in the corner and there's um, uh, a mushroom ring. So. There are six spots in the yard that you can decorate. So I've used all six of those hooks to decorate. So the three trees, the pond, the mushroom ring, and the chair, and that's all six. You also get a, um, a welcome mat spot. So I've got a uh, welcome mat there. I think I've got the treats mat there actually still. Okay, so now we've stepped inside the house. Mm. In real life, the neighborhood re would revolt. It would be awesome. 
Um, it's, uh, it's quite delightful having those out there. But once you step inside the house, it is very relaxed and chill. Um, so this is a, a house that I have over on, on Evernight. And so I didn't want to be switching servers a whole bunch during the stream. So I wanted to, so I went and grabbed some pictures so I could, um, so I could show you all um, while I was uh, uh, talking about the various houses because I thought that was a, was a good compromise. So you don't get to hear the music that I have playing in there, but it is the, um, the Wildwood um, music. So it's very, um, it's very gentle, it's very calming music. So on, um, on, in, one of the, so this is one of the things I wanted to mention was that the different houses, you know, they come with their default style. Like you can see the roof here. It's still got the, those exposed beams. It's still got that kind of plaster style to it because I'm in Breland there. Um, but I have managed to put down like grass, uh, a grass look as my carpet, but it is a uh, green grass, right? Um, I've been able to do a lot of things inside that gives it a different look. And part of the reason why I did that was because our, we had a lot of Bjornings in our kinship and I wanted something that would be, you know, akin to what a Bjorning, how a Bjorning would feel at home. So I was going for kind of an outdoors, um, very nature themed kind of look for, for the Bjorning. What? Help, help a Bjorning feel at home in Brie. Yes, so that's, uh, so we've got the candles, we've got um, that flower from the Bee's Big Business um, instance that happens, that's right here in the very front. We've got our little uh, shrew mouse house happening, and then in the distance we've got some other stuff going on, so let's pop over there. Um, oh, I didn't actually get closer. Sorry, uh, I thought I did, but I guess I forgot to save that picture. So we've got um, like a vegetable stew going over on the on the pot, and we've got a birdhouse, and uh, we do have um, meat on that one table, but that's for the people who uh, who come visit. <laughs> so um, as I've mentioned, the the houses have multiple rooms, right? So for our um, uh, deluxe house here. Let me see if I can pull that up on top. Um, oops, no, that didn't work. Hold on a second. I'm still getting used to how to make one thing show up and not another thing show up. There we go. So for our um, Breland house, which is up above my head there, you can see that um, it's got one large room and then it's got one room off to the each of the different sides. So the room, when you come into the house and the room you go off to the right shares the same decoration in terms of the walls, the wallpaper, the color of the walls, as well as the floor. So any color that you've done on the flooring, um, any flooring that you've put on there, it will share that all of those looks between the main room and the room off to the right. But the room off to the left has its own uh, set of hooks. And I, I got a picture of that. Um, I think I did that though, not until we get to Belfalos. So it'll be a few minutes. Um, that's okay. So you'll see in the house tour here, this is the room off to the right because you'll notice it is sharing the same look, the same carpet and the same walls, see, as what we've done as the other room. So this is the room where your chest is located. This is where your housing chest is located. Um, okay, so let's keep moving on because I'm realizing I'm already up to an hour and I've got all the premium houses still to go plus the three other housing. I, I knew three hours was gonna be tough to make it all within three. Yeah, right? Hello, four hours. Um, and then also I decided to go, okay, so this is going from the main room into the side room that does not share the same decorating. So it's got its own uh, decorating um, panel that you, you, where you can affect the, um, the flooring and all of that stuff. Hmm. Sorry, so the encoding was overloaded again. Let me close that a little bit. Okay. Oh, you know what I could do? I could do that. I could do that. Okay, see if that helps. Okay, so, um, boom, 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 boom. So, oh yeah, so here's the corner where we've got the, uh, the birdhouse, but then I've also got some lights, and I thought, I, I really like putting lights around doorways. That's been something I've been having fun with. And those are um, generally, some of those are wall hooks, and some of those are, are furniture hooks. It just depends on the light, on the actual light item itself. Okay, so now we've stepped into the next room, and let me put myself away again for a second. 
So uh, you can see that I went with some really dark colors, right? So we've got like a dark, um, a dark floor, a, um, a dark wallpaper. Um, but this was the first time I think that I put together what I considered like this kind of scholar's corner. So one of my kinmates made for me these really cool, a bunch of these really cool um, items because different um, crafters can make different things. So like I think the woodworker can make a, a little pile of wood that goes next to your fireplace. Um, some people can make bookcases. Some people can make tables full of food. Um, so you've got uh, some really cool things that different crafters can do. So this was some higher level stuff that uh, she was able to make for me to add to my little scholar's corner. So I was really proud of that. That was one of my first scholar's corners. And uh, I then you'll see it, it's, um, I carry that theme through many other houses going forward. So oh, here I was, uh, get, took a good picture, a quick picture of just trying to show you what it looks like when you have um, decorating on, when you have that ability. And then also when you are looking at that panel and um, I can't read what it says from here, but it's funny. It's on the save. It's on the name of the file, but I don't have the file name in front of me. <laughs> um, what the name of the? Um, so so basically, what you can do is you might see that the arrow in the picture is pointing to. Here I can put my thing back up. Maybe I can. I like to point. I point to things. So you'll see that the arrow on there is pointing to what looks like a little chunk of wallpaper. And that is the wall um, surface that you can affect. So you can put paneling, you can put plaster, you can, you can, there's one that it has like a top section and then something's different on the bottom. Actually, there's a couple of those. Um, so it's really, it's really cool that there's different ways that you can um, decorate things. And um, now the name of the file, I named the, um, what, the wallpaper, yeah. Awesome, thank you. So the wallpaper um, is field stone, and then, or that might actually be the flooring, um, and then the color was black. So you can affect those two different things. Oh, thank you, the floor is flagstone, okay. And the wall is field stone, that's why I got them mixed up. But then I also applied the black paint in that other um, panel item right next to it. So you see how there's like a paintbrush? So those are the two different things you can apply to both. You've got a set for the walls, and then you've got a set for the floors. So it's really fun because you can really play with some crazy, crazy colors. So for example, if we go back into the main room, I have applied the Summer Days wallpaper here, I believe it is, but then I also have I forget which color it is now, but there's a color that I've also applied and that's what makes the trees that kind of greenish color. So it's really fun to go in and start playing around with all the different things you can do. Okay, so, oh yeah, so there we go. And then I show the floor. You can see there's um, the floor texture and then the floor color. So those are the two things you can play with there. So at the beginning of, of your house, and this is usually where you'll find this located, you'll have that same panel um, but there's one additional thing, and that is uh, the ambient music. So you can have music playing in your house. What you do is there's different vendors that will sell, and you buy what's called a music box. You take that music box and you install it in that slot in your house, in that housing decorating panel that you see here. Uh, the cool thing is all of these things, the paint, the wallpaper, the ambient music, they are all reusable. None of those are consumed. So I was scared with the paints when I first started playing because I thought, you know, you paint something, I think of again from the real world point of view, right? So I'm like, oh, okay, I, I paint the wall, but then I want to paint it a different color. Well, my old paint is gone? No, it is not. It, is, it becomes an item, basically, and you just swap it in and out. So you can be sitting there and all day be like, oh, I like the orange. No, I like the, oh, let's try the umber. No, let's try the gold. Okay, let's try the purple. Okay, you know, and you can just swap them in and out and in and out until you find the one that you like. Um, and there, um, there's no limitation on which kind of house you can use the paint colors, the wallpapers, uh, the floor textures and the floor colors. Um, those are specific, like you can't use a wallpaper, a wall paint on a, to paint a floor. 
those are separate types of items. But I can take the wall paint from my house here and I can apply it to a premium house. It, it's all the same type of um, hook, as it were. So that's really nice. Yeah, there's no such thing as kinship house wallpaper or deluxe music. Like, I can take the music and put it in a deluxe house, a standard house, a kinship house, a premium house. It doesn't matter. A mead house, a mead hall, all of those things. If it is, it's the same type of um, ambient music slot. So that's really, really nice, and I appreciate that. Oops. All right. So let's see. What else have we got here for Brie? Oh, okay. So now let's check out a Brie Land kinship house. So uh, this is, uh, and if you remember, I was the big houses. There we go. Oh, that's not the one I want. I want deluxe. I want kin house. There we go. So if you see the kin houses, um, we are looking at a Bree Land Homestead's kin house. So right above me, right there. And you can see we've just walked in the door and we're in this little antechamber room. We're about to walk into that large room and then we'll go through there. We'll go into that other small room and then we'll go up the stairs and I'll show you something up there. Okay, so so here we go. We've just walked in the door and there's, uh, we set it up as kind of like a, a party pub kind of theme. <laughs> so we've got, you know, our cask and we've got our bottles of wine from the Midsummer Festival. So here we are. Now we're walking into the main room. And you'll notice it is a quite sizable room. These rooms are huge, if you ask me. So you see, if you look straight across, you'll see the door that leads off to the small ante room, and then um, there's a staircase right by there. Uh, if you look to slightly your left, you'll see a whole collection of stuff we did there. I'll take you closer in a second. And if you look to the right, there's a stage, uh, and that is where your housing chest is located. So that always cracks me up. So there we are, we've walked in a little bit further and we're looking at the stage. And again, we're in Brie, right? So we've got the exposed beams, we've got the kind of plastery look for the ceiling, um, but we've definitely painted this with some, some um, nice oranges and reds is the kind of the look that we went for here. And I love the goose house in the middle with the rainbow on top. <laughs> this is one of my pride and joys though. So if I go back one picture, if you look to your right, you'll see a fireplace there. Um, this is that fireplace, and I was trying to capture it in action. It is a clickable item. Uh, it's a fireplace with a little teeny dragon sitting on top of a giant hoard of gold. And when you click on it, the dragon wakes up and he breathes fire at you. It's so cute. Uh, we got that from um, Dragoch the instance so i'm very much looking forward to running that in the future and hopefully getting that over on uh, the treebeard server where i spend more, most of my time these days okay so now let's keep moving on from there now here's something i wanted to show you is that i so we have the cat on the cushion the sleeping cat on a cushion which is terribly cute um we're gonna cover him up for a minute i'm sorry kitty cat um, so you'll notice that I have, um, we have one of those tables. It's one of those tables that you can touch and it transports you somewhere. I love that. I love some of these fun things that the Lotro developers have given us where you can um, interact with these housing items and, um, and it becomes a teleport to the, um, the expansion. So that's kind of fun. Um, so what I did is, um, yeah, the only downside of these, this, this pre-planned, pre-pictures pre tour is I can't click on the mini drag. I would just be there for like five minutes clicking on them though. So it's probably good we keep going. Um, okay, so we've got that table and you saw the table before when we were standing um, in the yard. In fact, uh, let me go back down there and I'll show you. Because it has legs, but you'll notice in the image here, there's no legs. So it gives. Well, one of the things you can do is you can adjust the height, like the, the whatever axis that is, of something. And so I have a tendency to take things and kind of bury them into the floor a little bit or to raise them up um, a little bit higher. So let me see if I can, hmm? the Z. Okay, the Z coordinates. Um, I've totally forgotten how to get back to my Lotro camera. Oh, I think I close. Um, close this. There we go. So there's the table. See, it has legs. It's stick, standing up just like a, like a normal table should, right? Like you would expect a dwarven table to stand there and have legs. 
And notice this one has no legs. And that's because I've done that. I've squished it down and made it flat, so it's almost like a rug. So I have a lot of fun playing around with that. And that is one of the fun things you can do, is you can play around with how you have things situated in your house. There, I mean, there's limitations. There's, uh, there's definitely limitations, and people will have lots of opinions about those. Um, but part of the fun of it, though, is figuring out what those limitations are, and then how you can work within those limitations to be as creative as possible. Oh, here, let me move my face out of the way again, because this is our, our um, again, remember our kinship on this uh, server was, is, is all Bjornings, is very bear themed. Not all Bjornings, but that, that was kind of where we started. Um, and uh, so yes, we, this is the, uh, the, the bears having a good time partying with their kegs. I want to point out that there's the large keg and the small keg on top of it. That is not the way that those housing items come originally. Um, that is something that I did, again, playing with the, you know, the Z-axis to put it up high in the air and then moving it forward or backward till it got to a point where it looked like it could have actually come that way. So it's really interesting how you can play around with things and make things look like they were intended to be like that when indeed they did not originally come that way at all. So, oh yeah, and like the, you know, the bear drinking um, there at the table. Like, it just looks like, hey, there's a bear hanging out at the table. It's actually one of the stuffed bears that you can get, I think, through the in league. But um, yeah, uh, he just fits right into the scene. So it's pretty cool. Okay, so we're gonna go through that door you see up ahead of you there. And that took us into this little teeny room. So I thought this was so much fun. This was anniversary? No, spring. I think this was a spring event. It's not summer, I don't yeah, so this was the Gammer set. So it was uh, Bee's Big Business was the same festival. So I'm pretty sure it was Spring Festival. Um, so this was last year. And they had these different furniture items. And some of them you got for festivity tokens. And some of them you got through the regular vendors. So you had to work at them a couple of different directions. But I was really pleased with the way that we took all of the different little, you can see all the different pieces of furniture, and brought them together and placed them and created this really cute little sitting area. So um, I think I got a couple, yeah, and I got one from the other direction. And then of course we have a pig sleeping in front of the fireplace because where else would you put, you know, I mean, obviously your pig would be sleeping by the fireplace. Yes, barely any non-bears. It, it seemed like that. We did have a couple elves that were pretty active. Uh, but yeah, we did have a trio of Bjornings that were running through Moria together for a while. And that was a lot of fun. Okay, so you'll notice though in this room, there's a lot of furniture here in front of the fireplace, and there's no furniture on the other end of the room. That is because we took all of the furniture hooks that were located in the other part of the room to fill in with this furniture. So that's an interesting thing you can do with furniture hooks is you can drag them from one part of a house. Now there's a certain amount of distance it can go, and then it stops. Um, so you have to get kind of creative sometimes, but you can drag things around um, but that's why you'll see there's no furniture there. Now we're gonna go up the stairs, which are ahead and to the right there. You'll notice there's no furniture around here. And, oh, I didn't even bother capturing the stairs. There's a, a little landing there, and then you turn and you keep going, and then you, there's another landing and you turn and you end up in this room. Notice there's hardly any furniture in here either. I stole pretty much all the hooks I could get my hands on, and like I sent them down over to create that that gamma sitting area. So that's something to keep in mind when you're decorating is that sometimes you may have to steal from one place in order to get the look you're looking for in another place. Um, but it's cool like that you can do that. I'm really glad that I can do that. This room cracks me up. Did I get a close up? No, I didn't. Okay, so um, this room cracks me up. There's basically three things in here. Um, there's, I believe in the ceiling hook, we've got, excuse me, the um, black butterflies that you might see floating floating around. There's, um, they look kind of like miniature bats, and I think that's great. We have a mysterious door that's been placed in front of the fireplace, so it looks like it is the entrance to the fireplace and on fire. And then um, there's also a column of smoke that's been set there in front of it. So it makes this whole uh, floor, this whole little area, very smoky, and um, it's, it's a kick. It cracks me up. <laughs> So that's like our scary room uh, look. 
All right, so we're gonna go outside the kin house and there you can see how big that kin house really looks. Even, you know, uh, I'm at the edge of the yard, like standing kind of on the border by the next, the neighbor's yard. And I was uh, getting a picture because I wanted to show you like the things that we have in the yard. Um, you can generally at one of these standard house kin houses um, manage to get all of a set of crafting uh, facilities in your um, in your yard, but you don't have a lot of extra space. Uh, we got let's see, we've got a, um, a stage up there, and we've got a campfire, and then I'll put my face all the way again. We've got a um, um, just forgot her name. Marigold. marigold we've got a marigold and then there's this little rock um thing with the uh with the, the little turtle that looks or no that's not that one it's a different one but anyway there, it's another item right here in front of me so that's pretty much all the hooks taken but so i was really pleased that we were able to get all those crafting facilities that you can see up on the uh, kind of right hand side there in kind of a circle and um, makes it really easy for people to be able to do crafting um in a very easy way uh over there so all right, so that is a quick tour of some of the Breland housing. Oh, this is another Breland house. Okay, I'll try not to take too long. Um, I know, right? I'm terrible. Um, I have a lot of houses across a lot of servers. So um, this is uh, the Breland house. It's up on, um, it's up high. It's not, anyway, it's one of the, um, it's near the center of town, but it's not the one right next to the cliff. It's, uh, it's on, Ridge Road, I think it is. Okay, so I've got two of my um, animal houses out front, and then we've got a um, uh, hobnanigans, a miniature hobnanigans field there. So this is over on Landreval. Um, this house is over on Landreval. <laughs> um, oh, let me move my picture out of the way. So again, I went with a very relaxing theme here. Um, so, okay, yeah, so before I was mentioning that a kin house, a stand, one of these standard kin houses, has enough outdoor hooks for, uh, you could get a farm, a forage, an oven, a study, a workbench, and a supplier horn. So that's six that you need for that. And then you've got, I think, then we had marigold and the thing and the thing and that. So you've got like 10 hooks, I think, outside. So if you wanted to have anything other than crafting stuff outside, it makes it really hard to, to do that. So that's actually one of the reasons why um, in our kin neighborhood on Treebeard, actually, we've, we have used one of the other kin houses with one of our side kins to have all the crafting facilities. And so that way our kin house can have kind of a look to it and be more of a social gathering kind of place. Okay, so back to my Brie house. Uh, so you can see I did um, some decorating with the floor. Uh, you can see, again, I've got some wallpaper with some wall coloring going on behind that. Um, oh, I've got the sleeping cat on the rug there. And then this is actually something interesting. You can put some of the crafting stations inside the house. So you'll notice that I have the scholar's bench right there inside the house. So you can put, I think, all but maybe the farmland. Oh, and the forge might be an outside only item. But you can put a lot of your crafting facilities inside your house, which um, is really interesting. Like, for example, uh, one of our kin members uh, does a lot of cooking and cooks up a lot of stuff for the other kinship members, you know, for all of us to be able to just grab foods out of their chest. So in that room of their house where their chest is located, they have an oven right next to it. So basically they just cook the stuff and they turn it and they put it in the chest. Uh, so that is um, something you absolutely can do. So I like this because, you know, you, I could be inside my house and I could be doing my scholarly things and um, listening to my nice chill music. It's probably Tom Bombadil music in there. I like, that's one of my favorites. Okay, so again, we've turned, we're looking at the side room that shares the same um, decoration and we've stepped into here. This is where you're gonna find your chest. Again, this is a deluxe house. So, oh, let me move my camera out of the way. Yeah, I have, uh, I did manage to pick up a bunch of those um, uh, open floating candles the first year 
that that was available, but now they not don't have different colors. So hopefully they will again in the future. Um, one thing I really love about this is I love the ceiling hooks and some of the fun things you can do with those. I've got some of that like verdant ivy hanging, and I think that's um, one of the Yule Festival um, candles up there as well. Those are cool. Okay, so now we're going to head into the other room. Oh, I did actually do a picture here, but in case you were curious, because I took the names off to, get, to unclutter it as I was taking these pictures, but in case you were curious, you know, what does it look like when you have the words on? So, for example, there's a small ring and leaf rug. Um, we've got the messy writing table. We've got the in-league sinister keg. We've got a midsummer wreath. And we've got the um, the Yule Festival sconce there, and oh, and then I've also got the um, uh, Minas Tirith standing lamps, uh, the stained glass lamps from the Midsummer Festival. So you can see how I've got stuff from a wide variety of different places. You know, Yule Festival, Midsummer Festival, uh, the rug is crafted by tailors. Uh, you know, all these different things that you can come and bring to your house from a lot of different sources, but they, they can look together, they can look good together. Okay, so here's my side room that has its own decorative style. And I have to say, I'm not, I didn't quite have a style for this room. So basically one side of the room is like your scary, dark, you know, mysterious doors. And because every character I have gets a mysterious door, I don't know what to do with them. So for a long time I was putting them up and now I just, I keep a lot of them in storage because they get a little overwhelming. Um, but then over on the other side of the room is like the Gondor theme. So, you know, we're, we're, we're splitting Isengard and Gondor a little bit here in the room. <laughs> um, okay. And so now we're back to that small Brie house. Okay. So that is our tour of Brie housing. So let's see how fast I can go. I'm going to take you to the elves. So let's go look at some elven housing. Um, Oh, okay. We're going to start with an elven kin house. Um, so let's see. Fell of Lorne. And let me scooch that around. Um, oh, farmhand can be inside. Farmland can be inside, says Egathor. You have one inside your kin house. Um, what made your kin choose Weed Hollow? Weed Hollow? Um, is that the name of a neighborhood? <laughs> I'm not in. Um, or, is that, or is that a slang for one of the. Uh, uh, see, I'm in. I'm on a lot of the servers. Um, um, Witwitch. Oh, Witwitch. Are you talking about Witwitch on um, Treebeard? We were looking for a neighborhood where all the houses were available. Um, and there were a number of cute names. And um, that was the cutest one that we thought of the group. And so that was why we chose that one. Whichever neighborhood we would have chosen, we would have... I mean, all the houses were going to be sold out of it. So we were trying to find, oh yeah, Kleinwich, if you're on a German client. We were trying to find a neighborhood where people hadn't already started moving in. And so that was another reason why we ended up near the end of the alphabet. Um, if, you have, if you go around to various servers, you'll find out that um, the longer a server has been around, the longer the list of neighborhoods <laughs> grows. Because so many people move in, you get a lot of houses, you get a lot of houses bought up. Um, people will buy up all the deluxe houses, and so then there's no deluxe houses available on that can, on that server, and so then uh, the new neighborhood will open up, and the cycle continues. Um, interestingly, though, a lot of times, especially on the live servers, after the after the they've been around for a while, the small houses will sit empty, and the deluxe houses are all bought out. So I'm curious to see how that's going to work long term on, say, the legendary servers. Um, because I think I was already seeing that same pattern on an Anor where the deluxe houses were being sold out, the standard houses were sitting empty. And it's really sad to, to see those sitting there empty. So, and I haven't, I haven't mentioned this before, I don't think, but you can only own one of these, of these classic houses. So if you buy a house in Thorin's Hall, you cannot get an elven house. You cannot get a shire house. You cannot get a brie house. Like you can only own one house. You can own a standard house, or you can own a deluxe house, and you can pick whichever you know homestead you want it to be in. But that's it. Like you can't get a second one, uh, which is really kind of a bummer 
for some of us who like to play different characters, especially like over on Laurelin, where it's a very role-playing server, I have two hobbits and, an, and a high elf. And it's really weird to have my high elf running around in the Shire, <laughs> for example. So I, I, I kind of nip her in, get stuff, and then try to teleport out. Cause, but sometimes I gotta go to the town center and I feel really weird being this like high elf in the middle of a Shire neighborhood. It is very weird. Um, so I'm hoping that someday there will be accommodations and we'll be allowed to own more than one. But as it stands right now in January 2022, we can only own one classic house. So, so that's why we um, picked that neighborhood. Per account. per account, that's true. So if you have you know, other accounts, each of your accounts can own one house it, uh, uh, per server, per server. So you know, I have a Brie house on uh, Landreval, I have a Brie house on um, Evernight, I have a Shire house on Treebeard, I have a Shire house on Laurelin, I don't have a house on Crick Hollow. Um, I have a Falathorn house on Anor. I think that's on my active servers. <laughs> okay, so let's take a look at a kinship house in Falathorn Homesteads. Uh, so, let me see, let's see. Okay, so that is kinship houses, great. So we're gonna look at that top corner over there. Um, we're looking at one of those. So you'll see that when you first walk in the door, because that's where the little arrow, red arrow is to indicate where the door is, the front door is. When you first walk in the door, you're in a reasonably sized room. Off to your left, you're gonna find a large room with a stage again, so they kept that theme. Um, but if I were to go off to the right, I'm gonna go into a small uh, round room and then there's gonna be a staircase and it'll take me up to the top and there's another room or two up there. Um, now back on the other way, if we go through the large room with the stage, if you go through that to the other end, there's a small room and that is where the chest is located. Okay, so let's take a look at this one. So we've got, I have a small V um, property guard at this kinship house. Um, it's funny, I'm not currently the owner of this kinship and it's really weirds me out because it's like I decorated everything. So it's like, it's so weird. <laughs> it's a, uh, it was, it was a, uh, yeah. It just cracks me up. Okay, so there we go. So there's Spalvi standing out front. Now I did kind of a uh, wintry theme with this house. So all of the, a lot of the winter decorations, the Yule decorations have stuck around and they stick around for the year because um, as I accumulate them, I add them to this house. And so it kind of keeps that, you know, cold weather theme going at the house. Okay, so, but notice that we've got these, these, you know, large, tall, thin, I mean, it really does invoke the idea and the feeling of these tall, long elves and they're very elegant. And so you have delicate features, um, you know, on the windows, almost like a stained glass look. And you've got these arching, uh, uh, you know, sweeping kind of looks throughout as you go throughout the house. Um, oh, I did put a mushroom tent there though. And we've got a snowball field. Uh, but of course we have the little snowy, uh, the snowy birdhouse. Okay, so when we go inside, again, you know, big, open, sweeping kind of look. Now I've done the walls, you can see, and uh, this is a very large room. And again, we have um, crafting facilities at the end of the room. So you can come inside and do your scholar stuff or your workbench stuff. Uh, that's as far as we got. We didn't put the rest of this. We didn't, we didn't get any other things in here, but, but you can see again, you know, we've got some like um, maybe some delicate uh, features that might be a, like maybe a light wood or that might be a wrought iron. Um, you know, you've got some very delicate features going on because it's very elven housing. Okay, here we've stepped into the, uh, the main room and it is so big. Um, there's times, so I did have more stuff in here, but I moved some of it to, I bought a premium house and so I moved some of it to the premium house at one point. Funny thing is I actually took a lot of stuff out of my personal house to put in the kin house and then I took the stuff from the kin house to put over in the premium house. So it's it just uh, pilfering from one to the other. But again, we do have like the, the dual lights by the door frame to kind of give it a little bit more of a, you know, an elegant look. That's something I added. 
Um, we've got a table. Oh, so sorry. We'll look here at the um, at the stage for a second. So uh, again, we've got the candles placed up along, and the um, I didn't know. Oops, sorry. I didn't know what the uh, how big the column was going to be that you could get at the Midsummer Festival. And it turns out that thing is honking huge. So um, it goes well on this giant stage. <laughs> that's, that's where we ended, that's where I put it. And then um, uh, Midsummer Festival, I got a bunch of the little food platters and stuff. So we've got our beautiful little elven table and we've placed some of these nice platters on it on this side. So just to point out that that is a series of, I think, one, two, three, four, five different hooks. So it took five, four or five different furniture hooks to put that look together. So that's something to keep in mind is if you're trying to do something like that, you'll want to find an area that has them so you can drag them in and then, you know, change their elevations so it looks like the platters are sitting on the table and, and those kinds of fun things. Okay, and then in this other corner, we've got a little hobbit drinking table with some lights, some nice little candles. Um, I, uh, okay, so this is the little antechamber. So again, we walked in the door and we turned to the other side. We've got a little antechamber. Here you'll notice the decorating changes colors because it shares a different um, decorating panel than you have over on the um, over on the main side. And we do get a ceiling hook, and we've got another hook. So I kind of made this like starting to be their terrarium. And okay, so we've gone uh, up the stairs. <laughs> And now we're looking at, there is a side room. Now, if this was a deluxe house, this would be the room. Like there would be no additional room. This is the room, there's a fireplace here. Uh, but with the kinship house, there is a little hallway and an additional room that we have access to. So I've got, we've got our little uh, wine collection here as you walk in the door. And then on the other side, you've got a barrel if you prefer some ale, a couple barrels. <laughs> um, and a nice cozy fireplace. So back down to the ground. Um, floor, actually, hold up, I think this is my house. Yeah, 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 okay, so that was the Ken house. We left the Ken house, bye-bye. <laughs> Apparently we were in a hurry to get out of there. <laughs> but now we are over at um, a deluxe house. So, uh, deluxe houses, again, have a single room that's in the center, and then you'll have a, a room to the side, each side. Um, so it's kind of like take that kin house idea and shrink it down or take this idea and enlarge it for the kin house, however you want to look at it. So we're going to look at a Fallowthorn Homestead um, deluxe house. Okay, so let me close that. So this was my house over on Anor, and I went with the pink wallpaper. I don't think I actually, or so the pink paint, but I don't think I changed the wallpaper uh, on this one. I think I... I ran out of steam on, on <laughs> sometimes. Um, but you'll see I've got like kind of a cute little seating area. Oh, I didn't get a close up on it, sorry. I've got a little seating area there where it's got a couple of hobbit stools on one side, and then it's got a couple of elven um, chairs on the other side. And uh, so it was kind of the idea is that they could come in and drink and eat together. So yes, um, the other races looked at the elves and <laughs> And said, how about no stairs? <laughs> what about no stairs? And the elves went, how about more stairs? <laughs> so the elves definitely enjoy their, their elevation when it comes to uh, elevation. Elevation? <laughs> Elfa elevation? Elevation. <laughs> it's, like, it's like 11 in Dutch. Um, okay, so here's the top of the stairs on that one side. And again, you can see we've got the, um, the, the little fireplace is on this is in here instead of in that far room because there is no far room. This is the room. And you'll notice it's got, um, it's very curved walls. Uh, so it, it's, it's kind of weird trying to decorate in the round. Um, yeah, it just, it's, it, it just feels different, but the hooks are the same. So again, we've got our sleeping pig um, in front of the fireplace because, you know, that's where they should go. <laughs> and um, then here was the outside of it. So I didn't even take you into that room with the chest, but it's basically just, you know, a room with a chest and it's got a couple of housing hooks in there. Um, I did, like I said, pilfer a lot of the stuff out of the inside of my house to take to decorate the kin house. And then I took some stuff out of the kin house to go and decorate my premium house. So um, I didn't backfill at any point because I stopped spending so much time in Falathorn once I started spending so much time out in Rohan. 
but you can see here in my neighbor in my um, yard I have my six um, hooks because that's what you get in the deluxe house and so you you can see how I've tried to create a, a cohesive look right with you know thinking okay you know we've got the elves and they we're going with kind of a greenish theme we've got um, uh, yeah we've got our, our topiary and, and um, little weeping willow tree and such like that so um, so yeah so that was kind of a uh, an idea of what you can do with some of your Falathorn housing, with some of your elf housing. Okay, so let's now skip over to, who do I have, who do I have? Let's look at a Shire house. Dun, dun, dun. Um, oh yeah, this is my Laurelin house. Cool, cool, cool. So again, we're looking at deluxe housing in this case. So, and that would be where my face is but basically all they're all going to look very much the same right it's going to have um the front door it's going to have a series of windows some of them are tucked into the country to the side like that um but, and again you're going to have a large room that you walk into and then you're going to have a room off to each each of the two sides um for your alt account houses if you're paying upkeep on them from your main do you need to log into your alt account every so often to keep it alive not as far as i'm aware I believe that if somebody keeps paying the um, the upkeep on your house, I don't know that you ever have to log in again. Um, we are currently actually in a situation like that where one of our kin members is is taking a break, and so we are taking care of her house for her, and um, it's on Treebeard, which is a VIP server, and um, and you know she's moving and you know all that kind of stuff, so she's going to be away for a little while while the internet gets set up and all those things. And yeah, and I think she is not even VIP right now. And as you know, Treebeard is a, uh, you have to have a, a subscription. And we're able to keep her house alive while she's gone, even though she is not a current subscriber. So I think that is the case. I think if, um, I think if other people are paying your maintenance for you, uh, I think your house, because like we have that with, now we do log in once in a while, but we have an alt account on um, Evernight where we, oh, it was one of the pictures that I was showing you. And we have, um, gosh, we hardly ever log in with her these days because we haven't been doing any music or hobnanigans over there recently. So then that was her main purpose for being on Evernight was <laughs> playing music and playing hobnanigans. So uh, we have been maintaining that house on her behalf and paying her maintenance because she doesn't go out questing, so she doesn't necessarily have the income anyway. Um, so it's just easier for us to do it, to take care of it from our main characters. Yeah, that's a good question. That's an excellent question. Okay, so uh, we're gonna pop in and take a look at this Shire house. So again, this is a deluxe Shire house and you'll see it's kind of tucked in. You know, you've kind of got that idea of where it may have, it's built into the countryside a little bit. And it, it's really cool because a lot of the Shire houses are like this. Some of them are freestanding, like the one in the center of town. Um, but most of them have some um, piece of the countryside where they are, um, they, they're, they're melded in with the countryside. And I think that's really, a, really cute. So here we walk, we walk inside and I have done some very bright colors on my carpeting. <laughs> I got the purple rug um, and then I kind of made little pockets of, um, of things. So we're looking right now at kind of the Yule themed corner where we've got the Yule fireplace and um, some of the snow globes and some presents and a little tree. And that's just right by the door that I did that. And then on the other side, we've got a couple other snow globes and, um, you know, some stuff over by the fireplace. Those items that are next to the fireplace where you see the wood in the, in the little containers, that is a crafted item. So I think I forget which crafter can make that, but that is something that one of the different, one of the professions can craft those. So that's really fun because then you just give them to all your kin members. So I went with kind of a lighthearted theme because, okay, of course, it is a Shire house. Um, now, the Shire housing, remember how when we were in Brie that it had, um, that it was the main room and the room to the right that shared the same uh, look? In the Shire House, it's the main room and the room to the left that are going to share the same uh, carpeting and wallpaper and colors and all of that. So uh, once we get past this little eating area, 
Here I've gone into the room off to the right side. Yeah, yes, just remembering my house. <laughs> and again, I set up a scholarly kind of, um, uh, I did a scholar setup in this one as well. So you'll notice the table is, uh, the table and actually the um, candles, I believe. Yeah, those are all from the harvest, no, the, yeah, the harvest festival, the, yeah, the winter, or the, the Halloween one, the Halloween harvest festival, the harvest math, yeah. So that's always fun to pick up. And then I've got some bookshelves there because this is my scholarly room, right? Because my main character in there, one of my main characters is a scholar. This is the, the place where I have two hobbits, so, um, yeah. So now I wanted to just show you kind of like where the decorating hooks are in this room. Um, this is where I used to have the scholar room set up, but I pilfered a lot of it again because I bought a premium house and I moved a lot of it to my premium house. <laughs> Um, so a, um, but you can see where the different hooks are that I have been, um, pilfering. The scholar's cupboard and round table are made by woodworkers in the artisan tier, says Agatha. Awesome. Thank you very much for that. Yeah, I, I end up going through my characters and going, okay, what can you make? What can you make? And some of those recipes you do have to go and purchase, like the rugs, um, you can make those as a tailor, but you have to go and buy the recipes from, like, inside each neighborhood, there's, uh, back at the town center that I was talking about, there's a, one of the vendors, um, one of the guys who sells, like, the furniture and stuff, you talk to them and they have the recipes that you can get for your different um, crafters. And it's all within the first tiers. It's like the first five tiers. So you should have access to that pretty early on in the game. Oh, okay, so that was a short tour of my little Shire Homestead's house. Um, and part of the reason why I only did a short tour there is because I also own a Shire house here and I can do a little live um, with you as well. So let me, let me see here. Give me just a moment to click the right buttons. <laughs> and then I know we've been spending so much time on the basic housing. Oh my gosh. Now we're going to have like premium housing still to go. So we'll try and do this quickly. We're not going to do it quickly. It's, it's we're, we're just going to, yeah, we're, we might be here five hours together. Y'all just, just settle in, grab your drinks. We're good. Okay, so this is my deluxe house on the Tribute server, for example. Um, so I have, again, remember we've got those hooks out front. And so uh, you can count. That'd be one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, it's a little bit of a mishmash right now because I, because um, the server's only been around for six months. And so I have, um, I don't have a cohesive palette yet, but we're getting there. Um, and then one of the cool things you can do is you've got these treat mats that you get during the Harvest Math Festival, and you can put those out, uh, but you could instead have a, a, a welcome mat. There's a lot of different, uh, there's, there's a handful, I shouldn't say a lot. There's about half a dozen different things you could put out front if you count treat mats as one category. Um, okay, so when you first walk in, sometimes when you first walk in, there's a lot going on inside your house. And so it might take a minute for it to load. And so you want to make sure that you give it a moment or two. Um, don't freak out. You know, it, it, it will show up. Yes, the unwelcome mat. I really want the unwelcome mat. Um, oh my gosh, that comes from uh, Dol Guldur or... It comes from a higher level thing that we have access to yet. And it's our understanding that you have to run it at server cap as well. So we're going to be running that as soon as we have access to it. And yes, as before points out, the Lotro Wiki is a great place to look when you're trying to figure out where to find a recipe. I will also mention, and I can't believe I haven't done so already yet, is um, Deco de Miu is a website and they focus solely on housing decorati decorating items. So if you're ever like, gosh, how do I get that festive table? Or, you know, or what things can I get through the Yule Festival? Or what welcome, what mats are out there? You can do a search on their website and there's, I mean, they that's what they do. They go, they get the item, they take pictures of it from all different angles so you can see how big it is, you can see what it looks like in the space. Um, it's, it's an amazing, amazing website. And 
uh, very so excited that they, they do all that work. Okay, so I have the floaty names on here, so you can kind of see in general like all the different things that it takes to create a look. So you can see we've got a whole bunch of stuff here, but if we take the names off, you can see it looks like a really cool little table full of a bunch of foods, right? But it took one, two, three, four, five, uh, and six with the cleaning the table. Things that we drug from different parts of the room. Yes, Deco de Mew is fantastic. Um, and then uh, made kind of like a little garden center there. This is a cute little housing item that um, was only available if you pre-ordered something a long, long time ago, well before my time. Um, and this is why one of my friends has um, decorating privileges at my house because it's one of those that, again, with every character that you make, you get one of these. And so they um, put one in my house for me. And so every so often, a little mouse runs out here and nibbles at the cheese and then he runs back in. So while we're waiting for George the mouse to come wandering out, so you'll notice that, again, uh, as I mentioned, the room to this side is the one that shares the, um, the colors and the look. So I'll show you real quick how you can change um, and move decorations. Okay, so I'm going to um, go into my decorating mode, which again, back up on top is here how you toggle decoration mode. So I'm gonna click that. Now all of my hooks are showing up. So this is every single place where I can manipulate and put something. Now it used to be that there was large furniture and small furniture and large walls and small walls and all sorts of things like that. But at this point they have mushed it all together. Hey, there's George. Hey, George. Um, they mushed it all together. And so it is either a furniture item or a wall item. Uh, I'm getting a server not responding on my chatty. Yeah, well, let me know if something comes up. Okay, so I'm going to move this because this is something I'm gonna do anyway. Right now I have it on a wall hook over here and I've rotated it and moved it into the wall. So you can see how you can have a lot of flexibility to play with things. So I'm gonna go ahead and drag this out of its spot and put it in my inventory. Now I have it back and I'm gonna walk over to where I, whoops, where I wanna change it. I wanna put it in this doorway. So I'm gonna pick a wall hook nearby and that one is empty. You see there's nothing there, it's just a little hook symbol. And I'm gonna pull this in. Oh, okay, I didn't know you could do that. I thought it would stop it. Okay. All right, so now I'm gonna grab this and I'm gonna drag it into that spot that we opened up. Ta-da! Now all of these are um, have lit up and I'm able to do stuff with them. So I want to move it the other direction. All right, yeah, it's pretty good, that's not bad. But it's a little bit low, isn't it? So we need to move it up, so that's why we're gonna do our little X, Y axis here. Yeah, that's too low, we'll go the other way. And pull that up, and oh, it's not centered, so we need to move it. Oh, let's go this way a little bit. Uh, maybe back one. And how do we feel about it? Is it centered? Nope, we wanna bring it, I wanna bring it further into this room. So we're gonna now do manipulate it this way which moves it back and forth that way. And that looks pretty good. Do we like that? And that, notice how you can move around it while you're manipulating it. But if it's a piece of furniture and you try to like step where it currently is or where it's going, it will glitch you out a little bit. So you might wanna walk around things sometime. Okay, I'm happy with this. I'm gonna hit save. Now, before I do that, I wanna show you here right there. There's a return to owner button. So let me save this and put that away. So for example, if I was like, oh gosh, I really need to send that back, you know, that mouse, um, I need that spot or I don't want it anymore or whatever. Now I would never, never want that anymore. That thing is the cutest thing ever. Um, but if that was the case, I could open that up, click that return to owner button and it will send it to their home chest. It will send it into their housing chest. Um, I think it sends it to their housing chest. If their chest is full, I think it goes into escrow. I don't think it mails it to them though. 
I think it goes into their, yeah, it, it sends it to their stash. So, okay. So, um, oh, and then we didn't even look at my other room. So then I've got a little scholar ish. Oh no, this is my room of, of, uh, of portables. <laughs> so the other thing I wanted to show you real quick, since we're in the Shire. Oh, I will just, I shouldn't have done that. I will use my travel skill. I'm going to use my travel skill and go to my kin house. It's just over the hill, but this might be faster. <laughs> so, okay, I promise, I promise we are going to get to um, the other homesteads. Now, I have to say, though, I don't have um, any Thorns. I don't own any houses in Thorns Hall, so I don't have any pictures <laughs> for Thorns Hall. But I will show you how we're going to get there. Um, I'm going to kill two birds with one stone with that one. So here's our kin house. And again, like I said, this is um, more of a social gathering space than um, the crafting space. We have the crafting stuff at a different house. And then notice how it's got like these upper bits, but the house is really only one level on the inside, mostly. Okay, we'll let it load. We've got kind of a, a Yule-ish theme happening here in this, uh, in this entry chamber with some bright carpet. I may switch out the carpet at some point. I haven't quite decided what I'm doing with the carpet. But look at that wallpaper. And then I painted it green. Isn't that fun? Hmm? Hang on just a moment. Okay. Okay. All right, more tech support. Okay, so there's all sorts of interesting things that you can put for example, there are rainbows, as we saw in that Brie house, and so I got one from my Shire house, too, because I thought that was fun. This is our kin house. Uh, we've got our little, um, another little Yule Festival area that I'll be taking down some point, not too long. We'll get to it, though. Um, now, a kin house has the same sort of thing, where it has this space and this space are, are sharing um, that look between the floors and the walls. Uh, but again, we've got like a kind of a, a reading space, a little bit of a, a scholar theme going again there. Uh, we have an interactable item here. So anybody who walks in can click that and then the little cart goes around. Um, we've got a barber, a visiting barber. So because our kin house permissions are set to anybody can use the decorations, um, anybody in the world. So anybody can use the tabletop minecart and anybody can use this, um, the visiting barber, for example. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm just pushing chatty out of the way for now. Might just close it. I don't know. So, and then, okay. So remember I said that it's all one level sort of. So once you come down to this way, there's a hall that divides into two. Let me pull up the map. So, it might be chatty that's causing the problems. Hey, there we go. Now Chatty's back. So here we came in, and there's our side room with the other stuff. But we've got the two hallways here that are dividing out. Come back, yeah. There we go. Um, so technically, they're still the same level, but it kind of goes down a slope as if it's gone down into the ground. So, you know, and here we can go back up the slope. And then we'll turn and go down the other slope. So again, it's like it's going down into the ground. Is it really? I'm not, I mean, kind of, sort of. <laughs> I love how we have a fish pond in the middle of the bedroom. <laughs> so you can do all sorts of silly things in your houses. Okay, so we're going to kill two birds with one stone here because I want to show you a place in Bree. So let me, I'm going to use uh, Travel to Lalia's Market because that's a fantastic little travel skill. And I want to show you... Um, where you can find all the brokers. So let's say, so remember earlier when I was saying about how you are looking for, you know, the broker for the Shire house. Well, you can ride through the landscape and go all the way out there, but you don't have to. Um, there is now a place in Bree where you can find housing brokers for not only the four original classic um, homesteads, but also for every one of the premium ones. So we are here in the center of Brie. Let me show you on a map. So here we are 
in the center of Brie. And we are headed uh, down towards the mayor's office. So we're here at the Boar Fountain. And you've got a Wenda Cranesville there. You've got the um, Belfalas housing broker there. But we're not going to talk to her right now. She's also, or her twin, is located in this broker's office that we are headed to. So we're going to hop down here. And here we are right by the mayor's office. Okay, we're gonna keep going across his little plane, his little square. And over here, did I have floating names off? There we go. Uh, you'll see something called broker's office. That's where we're going. We're gonna head right in there. <coughs> so the broker's office has a lot of really interesting things that uh, are pretty cool here. For one, Every single housing broker is here. So if I want to, let me take the floating names off for a minute, clear up the space a little bit. So if I want to go to any one of the housing neighborhoods um, or purchase something from any one of the housing neighborhoods, I can do it from this space right here. Pretty dang cool. Also, oops, and they're all right here in this little teeny room. Um, you'll notice that we have these things called real estate ledger. So remember how I said that Witwitch is sold out our neighborhood. <coughs> Excuse me. So if I talk to Andy specifically, I'm and I'm like, hey, sense, what do you have for sir. sale? He's be like, well, this is what I've got for sale. But I'm like, oh, but I need to go visit my friends. And I want to go visit my friends over in Witwitch. Can you hook me up? That ledger on the table, I need to click that ledger. And that opens up all the neighborhoods. So it's kind of like you, I've just walked to that portal without having to go all the way to the portal. And notice right there, Witwitch is, is, um, is uh, an option. And I think, so if I were to click on it like Weed Hollow and I just say enter, I think it takes you to the kinship house in the neighborhood. Well, no, 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 sorry. It takes you to the entrance and then you ride from the entrance. That's right. So it just takes you as if you had just gone through the portal into that, into that neighborhood. So that's a really cool way that they added about a year ago um, that because a lot of times people were trying to get to the new Rohan housing, like, you know, somebody was having an event and somebody was too low level, they couldn't just ride there and the houses were sold out in that neighborhood and so they had no way to actually get there and they couldn't be pulled in by a captain because they're too low level, they're not allowed to. Um, and so, you know, they, they created um, SSG came in and created these ledgers and uh, that allows you to see the entire list of all the neighborhoods and so then if you know where you're going then you can just pick that. So I think that is a fabulous little quality of life improvement that they added to the game. Okay but we're gonna go and um, we're gonna go over to Thorin's Hall for just a couple minutes. Um, so let's check out a house and we'll just go to a, a standard house. We're gonna tour the house. So I've picked a house and I've clicked tour house. Oh, Ryan, I wish I could take credit for this. Um, I am not an SSG employee. I just, or maybe you're speaking to SSG, you know. Um, yes, we do love and cherish this game. It is fantastic and I'm very grateful for all the cool things we get to do in the game. It's pretty awesome. Okay, so here we are in Thorns. Right, so I'm gonna show you. Um, bum, 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 bum. If I can. Um, it, OBS covers it up. Oh, oh, Ryan, you're so sweet. He says, I thought, or they say, I, I, uh, sorry, I thought you were a developer because you explain everything in great detail and know the systems. I, I, I thank you so much, that is a, that is a huge compliment. I just um, really love certain things about the game. And so, for example, in this case, housing. Um, housing is one of my jams. And um, so I, am, I really enjoy learning more about the housing. And so I really enjoy sharing that knowledge with people um, because, yeah, like it just, we share it with each other, right? So, um, so thank you for that awesome compliment. <laughs> Okay, so here we are in, um, in we're looking at the Thorin's uh, Hall homesteads. 
Now, like I said, I don't come here very often because I don't own a home in Thorin's Hall at all on any of the servers. Uh, so I can't speak too eloquently about the neighborhood, um, except it is very much like all the other neighborhoods, right? So you see you've got the neighborhood map there in the corner and I can blow it up here as well. Um, your standard house has that kind of uh, more square -ish, rectangular ish look. And then as you get into the bigger houses, they look more and more impressive, but it definitely still looks like it has been, you know, carved out of stone or pieces of stone that are then, you know, put together in some fashion, right? Um, so, uh, so we're looking here again at a Thorin's uh, Hall house and you can see like it just goes like we are underground, right? So like if I go onto the yard and look back, <laughs> we get some flair. Um, you can see how they've just carved out this entire space. Let me get rid of all that. There you go. Look at that. Like it's just gorgeous. It, I, I, um, I really have a lot of um, respect for the way they've done this because it looks gorgeous, right? Um, and you can see there's more houses. And so you see what they did in the Thorin's Gate and Thorin's Hall homesteads is you see there's a lot of elevation changes, right? Like we were just at that house and now we can come over here and we're like on the roof of this house. Uh, it's pretty crazy. And then, so I think that's the town center over there but then look we've got like somehow we've got like some snowy mountain like there's there's got to be an opening over there that's allowing the snow to come in um and then we've got i don't even know what's going on over here actually uh i wonder if that's is that a kin house hmm i don't think so i i went to a party at a kin house <laughs> one time oh oh this is part of the the town center stuff oh wow like, look at that. That's just fascinating. I mean, like, wow. So there's your escrow broker. So if you had stuff in escrow, you could talk to this guy. But usually they're just like, it's in your house. Like, they don't even have any, they're not even talking to you. Um, you've got a town crier here. I love the little, little street signs that are supposed to tell you where to go. Um, so real quick, and I don't have any screenshots of this for the future. Oh, this is maybe the exit. I like, I like exits. <laughs> but take a look at the green marble here. There is a new premium housing coming out for Erebor. It's Erebor housing. And they are really going heavy, really leaning into this, this green marble look for that housing. Um, so if you want that kind of a look and in Dwarven housing, you're in luck in about a month. So, okay, so I think we're not gonna spend any more time on, on standard housing. We've gotta move on. Um, okay, so let me pull up my document. I know this might slow down the stream a little bit. Um, so, bum, 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 bum. The classic housing, that came out in 2007 with about six months after the game started. So fast forward then about nine years when they, that's when they finally came out with their very first premium housing. That's when they introduced premium housing in October of 2016. And that is the Cape of Belfalos. Um, now it follows a similar pattern where it's got some smaller houses, some larger houses, and some kin houses. So they kind of kept that same concept of neighborhood you just repeat the neighborhood over and over again, you know, so people can buy in there and buy the house they want. And you've got a small house you can get into, you've got a large house you can get into, or you have um, kin houses that your kin can purchase into. Um, it has a very stately idea. It's the Cape of Belfast, so we're talking Gondor. And uh, so it's very Gondorian, very race of man kind of look. It's lots of marble and lots of like tall columns. Um, that was kind of like the decorating theme that they went into. Um, there's also with premium housing, at that point, they introduced a different way to buy houses. Cause you notice when we were looking at the houses so far, all the houses we've looked at, you could buy for 
coin for in-game coin, the, you know, the stuff that you earn when you're out running around, right? But once we get to the premium stuff, so let me pull up, start pulling up some Belfalas stuff. So you notice here we go, we've got that kind of um, austere, um, kind of uh, marble look going on. Now these houses are much, much bigger, but you cannot buy them. Let's go back to the purchasing real quick. You can't buy them for in-game coin. You can't go around and earn that and buy it that way. You can buy it, well, you can earn it, but in a roundabout way. You can use Lotro points to purchase either Mithril coins to buy the house or housing writs to buy the house. So that was different. Uh, that's a different way to do it. So premium and so premium housing introduced a number of different um, rules. One, you have to purchase it differently, either housing writs or mithril coins. Um, if you sell your house, so if you have a classic house, if you abandon your house, which you can do, um, you lose the money that you've invested into the house in terms of what you paid for it and any um, upkeep that you've already paid, even if it's for the future, you lose that. It's just, it's just gone. Um, whatever you had in your house gets packed up into your, into your chest and it's there at your next house. Uh, if you don't, if you don't want to do it that way, you should take everything down and, you know, put it in your pocket or whatever. Um, and then you just have, leave an empty house and that's fine too. If you buy another classic house, your, um, any, um, advancements you've made on your chest, uh, will follow you to your new house. Okay. So that's how that works. So basically though, if you abandon a classic house, you get a new classic house, um, but you don't, sorry, if you abandon a classic house, you don't get any money back. Okay. With the premium housing, you buy it with either mithril coins or um, housing writs. If you abandon a premium house, you get a percentage of the value of the house back in housing writs. Even if you purchased it with mithril coins, it doesn't matter. It's the housing writs you're going to get back. It used to be 75%, now it's 90%. So currently it's 90% of the value of the house. So if, if the house costs you 100 RITs or, you know, or is worth 100 RITs, and you, you know, even if you paid like, I don't know, 450 Mithril, but if it's worth 100 RITs, if you abandon it, you're gonna get 90 RITs back. So you, know, you can't just turn around and buy another house equivalent to it without buying up a couple more to make up the difference. Okay, um, that's not good round numbers because RIT, it usually costs like 15 RITs or 30 RITs or something like that. They don't cost 100, so. Don't, don't, don't think that that's what <laughs> that I'm saying. Go buy something for a hundred. It doesn't cost a hundred rits. <laughs> it's okay. Okay. So the house chests are smaller. They only come with 25 slots. Um, but you do get an additional travel skill. So that's kind of neat. And your travel skill, which is travel to premium house, um, it has a cooldown of one minute, regardless of how long any of your other travel skills are. You always have a one minute cooldown. So that is pretty dang neat. Okay, so let's take a quick look at some of some Belfalas houses that I took a quick tour of. Oh, so before I go off and show you those, um, here, let me get my camera out of the way. So the pictures that are on the screen there, you've got the stately house, that's the small one. Amusingly, the stately house has about the same number of housing hooks as a kinship house in a classic neighborhood. So I used to make sidekins because I wanted more storage. And then it turns out I could just buy for like a hundred and some mithril coins, I could buy a stately house and just put it all up on my walls. <laughs> so that is an option. Um, the luxurious hall house is your, your um, deluxe house, uh, if you like is your next one. And it is quite huge. And then at the bottom, there's two different kinds of kinship houses. There's one that is on the mainland uh, with all of the rest of the stuff. Where's my camera? I'll bring it back. Um, I wanted you to be able to see the kin house. <laughs> it's magic. Woo! <laughs> so there's the mainland versions of the kin house, but then there's also island versions of the kin house. The kin house themselves uh, inside is the same, um, but the location is what's different. And you do pay a premium for getting a kin house on an island. It, but it's pretty cool. 
Okay, so let's ditch that and let me show you. That's not it. Did I pick the wrong thing? Hang on. What do I need to do? Wakey, wakey. Hmm. Aha. There we go. Okay, so this is a um, luxurious house. So the, the um, not the smallest one, but the next one up. So this is a Belle Falas luxurious house, the, uh, the bigger one. And when you first walk in, it's the same side of thing. So I'm right by the door. I've just walked in. You'll see uh, directly to the side, there's a staircase that you can go up. And then in front of you is your housing chest. And then to one side, there's a little bit of space and a door that leads out. And then the other side, there's a little bit of space and a door that leads out. So basically you come in and you can go forward, either to the right or to the left, or you can go straight upstairs from here. So we are gonna go, where did I go? I think these are out of order. You're out of order. Um, there's a whole lot of, remember that panel that I was talking about where you can decorate the floor and the walls? Um, there's whew, like one, two, three, four maybe different panels. There's three or four different panels in this luxurious house. Uh, so you have a lot of customization that you can do in this house. So walking out of here and going to, I think this was, oh, cause this is, this is a house that I don't go to as often. Um, this is, if I go to the left, I think, I did the house in the, this room in the purple carpet with a food. This is one of my hobbit, one of my hobbits own this house. So there, you'll see food tables everywhere. I mean, a hobbit's gotta eat. Um, and then in the next room over, there's blue carpet and another food table. So here we are taking a look around, taking a look at the walls. Um, and look how high this goes. Like this is not your hobbit burrow, right? I mean, we are talking some serious uh, race of man kind of stuff. Everything is tall. Everything is very luxurious and, you know, but it, it almost feels elven, uh, except it's very boxy. And so it is definitely Gondorian race of man. Um, so this is up on the, on, on the top floor. Um, and the hooks are in really interesting places. Um, I would say that the Gondorian housing, the Belfalos, the Cape of Belfalos housing, has some really interesting challenges when it comes to decorating because it feels open and almost cold to some people. And so it's, you want to decorate it to kind of make it a more comfortable space, but at the same time, you don't have a lot of hooks to work with. You have more, you have like a kinship amount of hooks, right? Kin house, um, but it's a large house. So it really leads to some very interesting, um, yeah, you, have, you just have to get really creative when it comes to decorating. So for example, on this floor, I can't, I don't think there's that many more hooks for this little area. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put my camera away, don't worry. I'll be right back. There's a table, there's a bed, there's a thing hanging over the bed. Um, and there's a couple things on the walls. I feel like I should have more hooks in this room. I may have stolen them for another space which is what I often do. The upstairs usually I float down and make the downstairs um, more interesting and so then the upstairs suffers. Uh, oh, so here's something interesting. So I, uh, you can purchase for your house, this is something that you can go and buy in the Lotro store, you can buy a stable master for your house. They're like a decoration item, you know, kind of like the, you know, the, the crafting stations or a tree, but you can get a stable master <laughs> as well. And you can choose. See, so there's, there's hobbit versions, there's, you know, uh, th dwarf versions, there's like every, all these different versions of different kinds of stable master stands that you can buy. Um, once you buy the stable master stand, you put it in your, in your yard or in your house or whatever. Um, and when you click on it, it's just like the, um, if you have a supplier horn, in your neighborhood, uh, it's a very similar sort of thing. You click on it and it calls out a stable master that you can then interact with. So that's what I've done at my, um, at my Gondorian house. I went ahead and bought a stable master. So I've got that one minute travel skill um, and I can get back to the center 
like super, super quick. So let me think. Um, bu -bu -bu -bu. Just wondering if I can show you that real quick or not. Uh, probably not real quick. Okay, don't worry about it. But basically, um, in the Cape of Belfalas, you have. So that's another thing that was uh, that was a little bit of a uh, possibly a, a downside of the Cape of Belfalas is that the houses are big, the yards are big, um, very spacious, very spaced out, but that led to it being difficult to get from one place to another very easily. So I'm trying to see if I can get to the map of the Cape of Belfalas really easy here. It looks like maybe Cape. Okay, Nito, hang on just a, a minute. Uh, nope, that didn't do it. Ah, that's where it is. Okay, cool. So, Cape of Belfast. It looks like this. So these are all the houses, all these little white dots that you see skirting around um, on the on the shore there. And then you'll see there's two islands. There's um, uh, Tol Lachuel and Tol Falthui. Um, those are where you have your, kin there's a kinship house, one on each island. And that's the only thing on the island, is just the kinship house and amazing views. Um, so, for example, I have, the house I was just showing you, is over, do you see where it says Court of England? My house is probably over by that F in the Court of, and maybe down a little bit. Now, if you're looking for, say, the center of town with the stable master and... Yeah, well, basically with the stable master. It's over in that other part that says um, Cathalond. So, sure, I can have a one minute cooldown to get to my house, but then it's gonna take me like four minutes to ride over to the stable master. That doesn't sound like a time savings. So what I did is I went ahead and bought myself a stable master stand. So I use my one minute travel, I get to, this, to my house, click on my stable master, pull up the thing, boom, and I'm gone. So it's a much faster, transition than if I were to try and get to the stable master directly. The one in the neighborhood, that is. So that's a pretty cool little little trick that you can do. Okay, so let's see. Um, so here we are looking around um, the property of this um, of one of the um, stately houses. This is actually, or sorry, uh, luxurious houses. This is actually a different luxurious house. This one has like a um, kind of a balcony or a grass, grassy area here, like a little lawn. And then you go down and there's another lawn, the bigger lawn, as you can see there in front of you, where we've got like um, some flat trees and things like that. It's so crazy because like the stone of Eric and the flat trees, and the um, like, the giant swan fountain. I mean, if you look at those, they look small in this yard because the yard is so big. Um, I've also got a, a Theodore Grouse and um, a Marigold uh, a pair of property guards there. So I just let them kind of hang out together in the yard, and they keep each other company because you know, otherwise it'd be pretty boring hanging out there. Okay, so when you first walk inside, this is a house that I spent a lot of time trying to decorate and figure out how to make it feel more hobbit cozy. Because uh, my hobbit was the main one who was, who, was, who was doing this house, right? So again, you walk in the door, there's your chest right across from you. And then, so to the, to the left side, what I did is I created this kind of, somebody had given me like a ton of elvish furniture. So I'm like, sure, let's give it a try. So I tried to create like an elven sitting room. Now I will tell you, I took, this took every single hook on this floor and all the hooks that I could find from the floor above that were nearby in order to create this amount of, of sit, sitting. Um, I could probably do something with the floor and there might be a rug spot that I haven't used. But pretty much, you know, I used as much as I could find in order to create this space. So you can see why people are, were like, well, you know, they wish they had been more ways to use more hooks together in these houses. And you'll see this side of the room is completely blank because I used every hook that was available and dragged it over. And also that's why, like, I've literally just walked in the door and this 
the stool is like practically right in front of the door because that's as far as it will go. <laughs> it doesn't travel any further than that. Okay, so now let's step into, oh, and I did want to show you the, um, yeah, some of the stuff I had done. So this was the, um, oh, I forget what, I think it's gold um, wall color and one of the plasters that I used for the wall surface, but it has enough of that decorative pieces on the plaster that it shows up when you shift the color. So that was kind of fun. So yeah, I was trying to, I was trying to take a picture with the hover over, but the hover over didn't show up. But, and then here you can see like every one of these furniture hooks has been slid over into the corner over there. <laughs> So this is a housing chest. Um, one of the things I do when I have a premium house, because it only has 25 slots, so you don't have a lot of slots to work with. And I don't think you can, yeah, you can't even buy more yet. I'm hoping someday they'll let us buy more slots. But as it stands, you can only get 25 slots in the house, um, in the, the premium housing chest. But what I do is I figure out, well, what's going into that chest? And I label them uh, by where they're located at this point because the chest this is a weird thing um, when you open the chest it'll ask you do you want to look at just that house's chest or do you want to look at your shared storage which is located in your in your classic house um, so you could look at your classic house chest from here the housing chest that is in the house itself for some reason, and I don't know why, I'm guessing there's some coding that they couldn't fix, it shares the tab names. So if I change one of the tab names in my classic house chest, it changes the title, the name of the tab in this chest. So in order to figure out how to work with that, what I've done is uh, as I go into each tab then and I load and I put a little note as to which house it's located in is, is it in my classic house is it in Rohan is it in, you know like like that kind of thing so that way if I'm looking at one chest I'm trying to figure out where something is the tab has the name of what's located so if I'm looking in the other chest it will be empty but it'll have the name and then I know I just need to open the other chest it's a funny little thing but something to be aware of if you're if you're managing your housing storage and trying to figure out what's going on there. Okay, so we're gonna keep walking around. Um, so we've got some more Elvin stuff that I couldn't fit in the other room, plus, you know, food tables, because Hoppa gotta eat. Um, now, we're starting to look, so this is, remember when we came in the front, and there was two rooms that lead off to the side. So this is inside one of those rooms, and we're looking across to the other one of the rooms. And uh, I did, uh, I turned it into a fire scary room. <laughs> So we've got lava floor, and there we go. We've got um, the Minas Tirith model, and we've got, um, oh, what else have we got there? Uh, we've got our, our scary door, um, two scary doors, and, oh, and the Morgul blade on the wall. So I thought that was really funny that um, I turned this room, you know, the look of this room is able to be so dramatically different from the look of other rooms because it has its own uh, decorating panel. Okay, so if we turn and we're, we continue towards the back of the house, you'll see that we have, we're back to the style of the front of the house. So that's really interesting because you've got front of the house and back of the house have the same share, but the middle two rooms have their each, each unique individual. Um, in this room, it's a large open room and you'll see as we're kind of panning around here, there's a staircase that goes upstairs. So basically when you get upstairs, you've got a space, then you've got like a staircase that goes over what we're standing by, and it comes out to the front, and there's a space, and there's a staircase back down. So it's not a huge amount of space upstairs, um, but you can access it through this staircase or through the staircase at the front. Now notice through that doorway though, leading st continuing to the back of the house, you see grass. That is something that I find fascinating about this particular house and it is one feature that I really hope that they bring to other houses because it is amazing. It is an outdoor space inside the house. So you can use outdoor decorating items in that room. So cool. Like a forge. So like like a forge. Yeah, sure. Um, so I'm going to move my camera out. 
you can see, so I've got like a cart. Um, I've got like a open fire, open pit there. Um, I definitely went again, some hobbity style. Um, and it, and also notice it has, um, it's, it does not share the decorating of the walls with the front. So you get to decorate these walls separately from the front area. So there's another, another view. I'm actually standing on top of my goose house, I think. <laughs> so we're looking back towards the front and now from this outdoor inside room, you have two side rooms as well. So looking towards one of the side rooms, you can see it's not very well, very decorated. And you can look towards the other side room. It is also not very decorated. And I'll give you one guess why. I stole all the hooks from the other room. Yeah. So that's how I was able to do so much of what's here and to use a lot of um, different kinds of decorating styles because I, I was able to use hooks, all the hooks from around, around the different areas right there. Okay. So I just love this outdoor space inside your house. Um, the kin houses, the Belfalos kin houses also have a room that does this same thing, but I don't have a Belfalos kin house. Okay. So here we are. We came, we've come out of the outdoor, out, uh, the outside inside room and we've gone up those stairs that I was mentioning. So here's that space. And in that other house, this is where I had that bed. I had that bed at the far end of the room there. And, uh, and we have a food table, of course. Oh, but this one, instead of doing the bed and all of that sort of thing, what I did with this one is this is kind of like my um, gray company corner. So, you know, we've got our, our statue, we've got our portrait, and then we've got, you know, our map table. I thought that would be, it was kind of fun to make kind of like a little homage corner for them. And then of course we have some very particular maps that go with them. Okay, so, but, uh, so right next to him there, you'll see there's a set of stairs over there. <laughs> so we're going to go up those stairs and it's basically this little teeny hallway. Um, I don't think there's any furniture spots up here. I think it's just the wall, two wall spots. And so you can put a couple maps up um, and then you walk across the other side. I've stuck a bed there. Um, I think it couldn't float down or why is that there and not downstairs? I'm not sure. I'm not sure why I didn't move that downstairs. And there's a little chair there with it too. Um, not again, not a lot of hooks. Oh, there we go. I went ahead and showed you the hooks that I have. So I've got the, up here, we've got the bed, the guy sleeping on the bed, the chair next to the bed. And that is, I think all the hooks. Oh, and then I've got some like little flowery thing in the corner there. Um, yeah. So you, you, like I said, you, you want to get really creative if you're, if you're doing a Belfalos house, because um, the hooks are just um, in interesting areas. Oh, here I wanted to show you where the um, where you'll find that uh, um, panel for decorating this room. It's behind the door, of course. <laughs> and then you've got a panel there for doing the um, the outdoor indoor walls, but the uh, yeah. So there, but the floor is already taken care of because it's the grass. Okay, so, and that's the approach as you're looking at coming up to the house. So I find that really um, quite interesting that you have that outdoor room inside. That, that's like my favorite feature probably of that whole house. Um, so in this house, uh, this particular one, this is going back to the one that has the stable master stand. So you've got that down there at the bottom of the stairs. She's got, um, this house has kind of like an upper um, yard and then the main of the yard is over off to the left there. Um, so we'll take a little quick look over from looking at from the other side. Look how massive these yards are. It is really insane. Like, I love the idea of being able to have like concerts and large gatherings here, um, but it just, uh, I haven't run into a lot of those, uh, but it definitely lends itself. Like it just has a feeling like it should lend itself to that kind of a thing. I think more people got used to doing events other places and you know like you're uh, like on Weathertop or outside of Thorns Hall and so I think that's partly why this stuff doesn't find people coming and doing a lot of events at these okay so we're back to the beginning there okay so that was Belfalos housing um, and those neighborhoods are obviously very available like there's lots of, of um, homes 
available in those neighborhoods. So the next thing I want to do is I want to show you then, okay, so that was, what did I say, 2016? Let me look at my notes. Yes. So October 2016 is when they introduced premium housing with that Cape of Belf last homesteads. They took the lessons they learned from that and four years later, so it went from, you know, the initial classic housing, nine years to get the first premium housing, and then two years, or then, oh, I'm sorry, uh, four years later, they got, we got the Rohan housing in October, or sorry, in August of 2020. So they took a lot of the lessons from the Belfast housing and took that to the Rohan housing. One of the things they did is they created, the neighborhoods are smaller in the sense that there are fewer houses. So there's like nine houses, regular, and there's no, there's no stratification. There's no small and large. There's just the large. So you have just the deluxe house, if you like. Um, there's one deluxe house that has a special feature. And then there is, there's no kin houses. There's just the Mead Hall. Um, and the Mead Hall is a privately owned house, just like the other ones, but it's huge. I mean, it's a Mead Hall. And they also introduced a new travel skill, which is travel to kinship member. Uh, travel to kinship member's house, I should say, not the member themselves. <laughs> so let me, actually, let me pull that up. Ba -doop -doop -doop. So basically, let me step over to the side for a second. Um, so I have traveled a kinship member's house because I'm a member of a kinship and the kinship owns a kin house. So those are two of the requirements <laughs> to be able to travel to a kinship member's house. You have to be in a kinship and that kinship must own a kin house. It's a very strange requirement. I'm not sure why, but that is one of the requirements. When you want to use that skill, like for the first time, you go to your social panel and you go to your kinship tab. So social panel is O to open it. And then you go to your kinship tab. So now let's say I want to go to Affidil's house. I'm gonna click on Affidil and you'll see right here, this visit button has appeared. So what I could do is I could click on that and it would take me to her house because what she has done in advance of this is notice when I'm looking at my housing panel, I own the house in uh, Six Myrtle Court and I own a house at Two Ridge Road. You'll notice there's a star next to this one, but not next to this one. So I could star this one instead or I could star this one. So you, you can only have one starred house. It, it designates it as what it said there, your, pr your primary residence. So when somebody wants to travel to your house using that travel to kin member uh, travel skill, they will travel to the house that you have starred. If you have not starred any of your houses, there will be nothing there for them to travel to. Um, let me see if I know somebody who doesn't have Oh, well, that doesn't count because I'm me. Um, so, so I'm trying to think of somebody who's new. There we go. So for example, I click on this person, notice how it's grayed out. They, and it'll tell you, the selected kinship member has not specified a primary residence. So that's how you know that you can't use that skill to get to their house because they haven't starred one of their houses. Um, so that's something that, you know, if you are in a kinship and you want to be able to travel to people's houses, um, maybe let your kinship members know, hey, make sure to, to star, excuse me, star one of your houses so we can travel to your house. That's a pretty useful thing. So because a mead hall is not owned by a kinship, it's owned by a person, the idea was whoever owned that, kin, owned that mead hall could star that and then you could use that as a meeting place for your kin, just like you would use a kinship house. I think that was the plan. That was the idea. Okay, so let's take a look at some Rohan houses real quick. Okay, so there, oh yeah, I didn't even get to the good part. So not only 
did they, well, okay, it's all good. Um, I found Rohan housing pretty dang cool. Um, not only did they say, hey, we're gonna give you some more premium housing, um, but they gave us two neighborhoods at the same time. Insane. I can't imagine these people like working on this going, hey, I think I'm gonna make a premium house. You know what? I'm gonna do two at the same time. <laughs> so I was like, wow, you're a rock star. <laughs> um, so there are, yes, so there's two different neighborhoods. There's Rohan Kingstead and there's Rohan Eastfold. Um, this is that we are looking at right now is Kingstead. So uh, Kingstead is the, and I always get these mixed up. I have to look it up every time. Right, Kingstead Meadows. So it is the plains. Um, it's it's the big sweeping grassy, you know, uh, plains of Rohan, and then Rohan Eastfold is the hills that fold up and down. Which one is better? Oh my gosh! Right? Which of your children do you love more? Right? Okay, that's like how do you even answer that question? They're both good. They're both really good. Um, so here, we'll just take a look. Let's just look at some pictures real quick. Okay, so let's see. So this Rohan, oh, for, I want to show you first though, real quick. Bum, 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 housing images. Um, where is premium? Okay, so this is Rohan. Oh, see, that's the wrong one. Let me go to Kings, to Meadows. Okay, so here's Kingstead Meadows homesteads. So in this neighborhood, oh, let me move my, well, I'll move my picture out of the way for a minute here. So basically you have um, the, the deluxe house and it comes with like the house and a barn and a side barn and another thing. And like you have so many buildings that are a part of your space to begin with. So it's highly decorated just in general. Then you've got one house that's not only that, but it also has an additional room, which in the case of the plains, the Eastfield Meadows, um, Kingstead Meadows, you've got a cave that's down by the river, or then you've got, you've got the deluxe mead hall, and um, that's just crazy, crazy cakes tall and huge. Um, and so then also they, they did an interesting thing with this, uh, which they had also done uh, with Belfloss, is that the, the commons center, the center of town, or the heart of the town as it were, has um, all of the crafting facilities are there though. Um, so there's there's like two buildings and half of them will be in one building and half of them will be in the other building. It's really, really cool. Um, so hang on a second. Uh, Squirrel says, depends on which special house you like better. Of course, as any good parent, I choose both. <laughs> exactly. Well, so that's the cool thing. So remember back at the classic housing, how you can only have one classic house with premium houses you can have as many as you want they'll take all your money if you want to pay them uh it goes why not uh, so you could have a kingstead uh i did it again so east fold the mountains fold kingstead meadows or meadows right so yes so you could have a kingstead meadows house and you could have east fold hills house also, and I do, I have not all on the same server still. Um, I'm all over the place again, as usual. <laughs> Shocking. Okay, so look at, so let's look at some Kingstead Meadows house. So um, this is my house on Anor, and I went through a windmill phase. <laughs> so this is my house with a lot of windmills. Again, though, remember, these windmills are huge, and these flat trees are huge, and even still, they look almost dwarfed because the the amount of land that we're given here is so, so big. Okay, so when you go inside, windmills are the best mill. <laughs> Cute. Yes, Kingstead, Meadows, Eastfold, Hills. Okay. Right, Kingstead, right, I know, Kingstead, Meadows, Eastfold Hills, okay. Um, okay, so inside, um, 
So this is the, the Kingstead Meadows. So in the meadows, you get a small basement, uh, if I have this correct. So this was my little basement. So basically you have one, and I'm not sure why these were out of order, I apologize. Um, but you, you come in the house, there's two doors, first of all, which is crazy cakes, um, but they lead into the same house. So it doesn't matter which door you come in or go out, it's all the same. Um, and when you come in on one side, there's a little um, set of stairs that you can go down and that's that set of stairs in the back of the picture there. Um, so you can go down and come into these stairs. So this is the staircase that we were just down and now we have come back up. I'm gonna move over here. Um, and you've got, um, again, you can affect the, the color and the texture of the walls, the color and the texture of the floors. You've got a bunch of wall hooks and you've got a bunch of um, furniture hooks. So this is the door coming in from one of the doors. This is the room you come into um, for this house. And then in the main room or the other main room, there's another door that's kind of above my head and back that, back that way. <laughs> there's a little teeny hallway and a door there that brings you into um, in this room. And I'm basically standing on the chest. Now you'll notice there's a staircase um, and that takes you up and up as well. But the big, th oh, that's, sorry, it only takes you up like one level. So the thing about the um, Kingstead Meadows is the house has a small basement, the house has a main, and the house has a little bit of up, and that's about it. But you get a barn. And the barn is a whole nother decorating space that you have access to. So that's the barn at my house on, on Eastfold. Um, uh, yeah, the meadows. So you walk in, and I've hardly decorated this one at all. It's really sad. Um, but you've got some fill light there. So that was in the, oh, sorry. Okay. Rewind a little bit. For... Rohan, they introduced a couple of new types of hooks as well. One of which is called a lighting hook. So you can buy, in this case, this is fill light as opposed to like flickering or um, it's not spotlight, but it's basically that idea. Like the idea was like very centered. This is a fill light and I got the color soft red. You can get like, I think it's bright red or intense red vibrant red, something like that. So there's basically a soft and the hard version. And then there's a whole bunch, there's a, a scattering of different colors too. It is really crazy the amount of customization you can do with your housing and the lighting alone. Um, so that's one thing that's really interesting too. So if you get a Rohan house, you're gonna walk in, you're gonna be like, wow, this is really dark, this is a bummer. No, it's because there's no lighting. You go buy the lighting that you want and you play it, put it in and then you can adjust it too. You can move it back and forth, you can move it up and down, so you can have it like brighter here, brighter here, brighter over there, brighter over there. Um, with like this fill light, it kind of just helps, you know, fizzle out into the whole room, but you can get other stuff that's just very, you know, it would be very bright right here, but you're not gonna have, you're still gonna have more of a dimness on the rest of it. It's really fascinating. Okay, so yeah, so that that's, oh, that's all I got for this. Oh, interesting, okay. I think I was planning to take you live to some of this, but I think we'll just pause right there with that thought. And I'm gonna take you over to the other one. We're gonna go over into the hills um, because I have a mead hall that I got some pictures of there. And I wanna share those. So let me show you then from a, just a visual perspective, what the Eastfold Hills houses look like. And so remember, if we switch back, so remember the homestead, the, the meadows, see how it's, you know, very open and you can see, I mean, you can see the mountains in the background, it's pretty fascinating. Um, but, um, and the, the, the views from here are fantastic. It's really fascinating though, because you are in the landscape, you're in the world. And so you can see the little red dots out on your mini radar of the, the nearby, um, gosh, what are they? They're, they're like level 75s, right? Riding around nearby you. Um, but it's, 
you are blocked from them. They can't see you, you can't see them, even though they're like 20 meters from you or something at one point. It's crazy. Okay, so this is the meadows. I kind of like the meadows better, sort of. I don't know, it's so hard. So the house I have at the meadows also, I'm right by the lake. So there's this really cool little lake right there and I just go fishing. The house with the cave is really cool because it takes you go down by this river and then there's a cave and it's got a couple of, um, of hooks inside there and so you can make it really cozy or you can make it kind of like a bat cave. I mean, you've got a few options with that. Um, you've got that separate barn that you can play with. Um, like it's, it's, it's a tough call. Um, okay, so that's, um, but let's, but I wanted to look at, we're gonna go to Eastfold Hills though now. Yeah, so, okay. Um, yeah, you can't tell which one you like better. I know. Here's what I suggest you do is go to each neighborhood and ride around. And if you find yourself drawn towards one more than the other, I would say, you know, give that a try. Also, the wiki pages are really good. We may have had a help with that um, about the two different neighborhoods and have um, some good information there as well. But really, I think it all comes down to just going and going into the space and seeing what you think about it. Um, so, okay, it looks like the ambience furniture, furniture has the area lights, the campfire light, which is bright. Yeah, there's like a bright flickery, there's a candle light, uh, which is also flickers. There's fill lights, intense or soft. Um, you think both are pretty sweet. Squirrel says, I like the cave and tower, special homes and the mead halls. Mead halls are great to decorate, right? Okay, I gotta show you the, my mead hall. Okay, okay, okay. okay. I know, I guess I'm so easily distracted. Um, okay, so here we have some pictures of what the Eastfold Hills homesteads looks like. So you can see it's a more rugged kind of look. It's definitely more treed. Um, when we're in the meadows, you can ride basically from one person's house to another house. So it's really cool if you have like a kin and you've taken over a bunch of houses. It's really easy to ride from one house to another with um, the hills. It's, it's very hilly. You can't just like cross country it necessarily quite as easily until you get to figure out where the drop offs are and how to get around some of the um, natural obstacles that are there. So the hills definitely has a lot more terrain to it. Um, so there's that, you know. <laughs> yeah, if, if you like off-roading, um, Eastfold Hills will provide that to you. Um, okay, so let me... Okay, so here we go. So this is a mead hall in the uh, Eastfold Hills, okay? So this is the mead hall. So as you're approaching, you can already see this is a huge yard. Um, and the, the mead hall, you can see like in the distance in front of you. This is as I teleported to my house, this is where it dropped me. Like, it's, it's pretty crazy. Um, okay, so... Then I went to one corner of the yard. So I came in and then I went all the way to the corner so I could kind of try and get a side shot for you. So this is like the far edge of my property, if you like. And I do feel like it has to be said that way because this place is huge. And then I went to the other end of this front, just the front of the property, just the other side of it and looking back again. Like I have one of those um, sunken, the, the, the ship that, um, from um, uh, the instance with the with the uh, Verue, um the the ship that got broken, I'm pretty sure that what the, um, the, uh, isn't that the Argoroth? Yeah, Ar 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 yeah. So anyway, I think that's what that is, and that's pretty big, and it you know it doesn't look so because the yard again is so big, it's pretty cry crazy. A uh, Verue, thank you. Um, look at that huge like I've got a huge. Um, fountain. I've got, you know, the uh, the swan fountain there. And it fits in this space because it is huge. The space is huge. It works well together. So another really interesting thing that they added in with the Rohan housing that I think is really, really cool is um, these, these um, hooks that you have for mounts. Uh, you create like a little hitching post. It's a hitching post. And you, you what you, and we have a whole um, separate, if you look on the wiki, it explains how to do this. The horses didn't move initially. They were frozen still. Now, I think they have gone in and added 
a little bit of movement on the horses. But basically what you're doing is you're taking an existing mount that you have and you take a hitching post and you combine the pair of them and they create an offspring, which is this item that you put out onto your yard and into these slots. Uh, on a mead hall, there are eight slots and on a regular Rohan house, there are five slots. So you could have five mounts out there, but they're basically kind of like kind of like a wax museum version of your mount, if you want to look at it that way. Um, but when I was looking at this uh, yesterday, I noticed that like the um, some of the stuff that's on my my horse there was was swaying in the wind. I didn't see the horse move. It's possible they swish their tails or maybe move their heads a little bit. Um, and of course, this is a screenshot, so yeah, but I'm moving it all. But um, yeah, um, I think they did add a little bit of their animation in because I think that was something that people were like, can they move? Like, they're really cool. Can we have something? Kind of like with the um, housing pets, you can do the same thing. There's a hook you can get where you can take a pet, that, cosmetic pet that you have, and you take that hook and you put them together and they create an offspring, which is this housing item that you then can put out in your house or in your yard. And it is that pet, but they're able to, and at first they didn't do anything or move around. And then I think they did add some of the movement to them. Um, okay, so let's see. Um, Oh, Squirrel says, even the areas between the homes is nice. The random lake beneath my mead hall is a great view. There's just, that's what I mean. Like the, so this is where I struggle, right? Because I like the Kingstead Meadows. I like the look of it. I like the feel of it. I like how easy it is to get around. I also like Eastfold Hills because the look is amazing. The feel is amazing and the views are insane. Like I'll show you here in just a second. So, oh, Squirrel, thank you. Uh, I'm I'm appreciative that you like how I explain things. <laughs> I try to explain things without making assumptions that people know everything that's going on in my head, uh, and try to at least get as much out of my head as possible. Um, I don't always succeed, but I try. <laughs> we used to joke that I should have a book of you know all the things that I know that I can hand to people sometimes. For, for very specific instances, not just in general. That would be crazy. Um, okay, so here, I'm gonna take a little tour around the mead hall. So here we are looking at the mead hall from, from one direction, and these are almost all yard hooks. Now, the stand with the, um, the horse's head, that comes with the house, that was there already. Um, the hitching posts and har pet harnesses, are they only for Rohan housing? The hitching posts are only for Rohan housing. The pet harnesses, however, um, you can use in any of the housing, including the classic housing, I believe. Double check me on the wiki on that because we've looked into this before and we've put the information on the wiki to make sure it's correct. <laughs> Don't trust my brain on that one. Definitely check the wiki on that one. And if you find the pet harness, okay, we're trying to find the, the link and we'll put it in the chat there so you can just go straight to the wiki. Okay, but yeah, so everything else I've put in the yard Oh, there we go. You have a cat and a dog and a Bilbo in your Shire home. Yeah, but my Bilbo came from Rivendell. He's a curious visitor. Is that the same Bilbo that you have? He's not a combined post. He's like a, he's like a property guard, basically, um, I, in terms of like the um, programming behind him, probably. OK, so walking around, I, I thought this was a clever little thing. So often the sun, if the sun is shining, the sun is shining right there. So we have a stone troll on the side of my house. <laughs> Bilbo is not a pet. <laughs> so we have the stone troll that I got from, ooh, we looked this up yesterday, now I can't remember, the stone troll. Um, the, the harder, the oh, from the Limlight Gorge. That's how we've got this stone troll. So there is also a stone troll the first, stone troll the second, stone troll the third, that are the same as the ones that are in the stone troll glade. Um, you can get those on legendary servers. So, uh, you made a pub in the Shire, so Bilbo vote visits for story time. Ah, that's fantastic. Um, okay, so um, regarding the cosmetic pet decorations, yes. They allow you to use your cosmetic pets as housing decorations in any neighborhood, both standard and premium, as both interior and exterior decorations. Awesome. I do remember somebody, or I think when they first were, were playing with those pet harnesses, and the testing server, the Bull Roar server, came out with that. 
And somebody just went and made like an entire, like every single hook was cats or something. Like, <laughs> I think it's fantastic. I'm like, I wanna do that. There you go. There's the view from my, from my meat hall, right? Like, who doesn't want to look at Metal Said and, you know, and just be staring off at some super classic Lord of the Rings stuff, right? Like some lore right there. Now, the Mead Hall is not the only place you can get this view. I think there's even places in the meadows maybe where you can get this view. But I mean, it's just stunning, right? Like, and even, and when, it, when the rains come over, it's beautiful. I've seen times when like the sun was shining and it just like shines right on that. It's just, it's amazing. It's just amazing. Um, so I just had to share that with you all. And yes, and then, and yeah, and Edoras just spread out there below it. Like the detail that they do in this game and that you can see, uh, especially if you're able to play with high graphics, is just, it's amazing. It's just really amazing. Okay, so we've gone inside the hall and I'll show you a few things. So um, Squirrel asks if I got a chance to check out the airborne housing on Bulwer. I did not. Um, yeah, sometimes days just go by and I kind of miss the world. Um, so we missed, yeah, I missed uh, the Erebor. I did see Scenario's um, run through that he did um, a couple weeks ago, whatever. And I also saw the article. Oh, actually, I can put a link on this one. Um, there's an article that uh, Deco de Mew, they did a, um, a, an interview with Scenario and discussed it. Um, so let me put, drop that link in there. Uh, so if you wanted to go and see what uh, Scenario has to say about it, and then also there's a couple of pictures. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't have a, a lot of Erebor preview on here. Um, I was hoping to add, uh, I, I hate using other people's stuff, you know what I mean? And, and because I didn't go into Bull Roar and take my own pictures, I was kind of feeling bad about that. But we definitely can talk about Erebor in a minute. Okay, so let's finish through with, let's take a look at um, this Eastfold King, um, house. So another hook <laughs> that they introduced, um, there's two hooks in here in the Mead Hall that are only available in the Mead Hall. Um, one is uh, there's a fire pit through the center and uh, you have a couple options on what you put there, but then there's also columns. And so I wanted to point out that these columns, you can decorate the columns in, in groups, you do it in groups. And so I was like, all right, we're gonna try all the things. And so you can see that I have like one, two, three, four, maybe five different column types <laughs> because I wanted to try them all. Um, so you see, we've got like kind of a, a, on the far side, we've got kind of like a blue and white marbly one. Um, nearby, we've got that kind of wood with some engraving on it. Um, further on, you've got like a pink marble. Um, I know that there's like another wood one with some different carving on it. It's really, really fascinating. Uh, that you, so you can play, definitely, there's so much you can play with here. It's almost overwhelming in a, at times. So that's partly why sometimes I, I test some things and then I leave it because I'm like, I don't have a good answer on what I wanna do instead. Um, but so you can see, yeah, so the columns, are, are heading into the Mead Hall. So basically, if you look to the far side of where we're standing, you'll see a little gray blob, that's the house chest. And so between us and the house chest is the front door. So we've come in the front door and kind of scooched off to the side and we're getting a good look off to the side. So um, now remember how I said the other, uh, the, the, the um, Kingstead Meadows has barns but not really big basements or anything like that. And they don't go up very high. They only go up like a level or so. This is where the Eastfold Hills, you get deep stuff. So you get a huge basement here and we've got like, well, the houses, the basic houses have a higher level. Now, um, the, the um, Mead Hall, the Mead Hall has this big basement and it does not have a barn. So that's the trade off there. But we we have two side rooms on each side, and we have an upper loft that goes out and around. So that's the same on both mead halls, whether it's 
uh, Kingstead Meadows or Eastfold Hills. Okay, so we're gonna walk in. So now let's pretend we've walked in the front door and we're walking straight forward. There's, this is that pit that I was talking about. So you can do a fire pit that's like one long fire pit, which makes you mad because you have to get to the NPC that's at the other side and the fire pit's in your way. Or you can get one that's kind of like little pockets of fires that go along, or you can get um, a table set. And I think there was a table that was empty, maybe. And then there's this table, which is like full of, of food and dirty dishes and whatnot. So of course we went for the, you know, the one that's full of food and dirty dishes, because I thought that was fun. And made it a bit, you know, festive, like, you know, as if we're actually having a party here in the house. So you, and again, you can see the columns, how the columns as you go down have um, different looks as you go along, because I was playing around with those different, uh, the different column hooks. Okay, so here I am kind of looking down from above and I'm looking back towards the front door. Uh, you see there's some stairs that go up and that goes up to like the, the loft that we're about, we're gonna go up and check here in a minute. And we're standing, there's a big dais. So again, we've got a big stage kind of idea going on again. And I just, I have um, the floaty names on so you can kind of see how there's a lot of hooks going on there. And I was able to use a lot of hooks to put food items. I used food items from the Midsummer Festival and I put them on the table so it looked like there was more food on the table. So I had a lot of fun, a lot of fun with that. Okay, so I guess that's it for that room for the moment. So here, so if you go off to the side, there's um, kind of a big L-shaped side room and then another room beyond that. And it's like that on both sides. They're just mirror images of each other. So this is the one that you'll find over on the left side. And uh, so you've, we've just kind of stepped into the room by that doorway that's right there and uh, kind of stepped back. And then we're taking a look going forward from here. And then as we walk in, then we see we've got, you know, this big, uh, this tree sitting here and I've added some, um, uh, some of the, the foliage items that you could get from one of the festivals. Now, the next room I thought was really funny. Um, it's again, another dark, scary room. So we've got a Moria map and it's hanging, I hung it in the doorway so you can't get through it unless you go just like at the right angle. So it's kind of funny because you feel like you're blocked in the room where you can only get in and out by that one door. Um, but we've got like scary things in the room. So we've got like the mysterious door and we've got some of the weird um, trophies that you can get from defeating various things. But uh, there's also a goldfish on the wall. So I thought that was funny. And then, um, because <laughs> people would be like, why is a goldfish scary? Like, just make them, you know, make them guess. Um, and then, yeah, so then we've got some of those other creepy trophies on the wall. And then an interesting thing they added in with the Rohan housing neighborhoods is each neighborhood, if you own a house, if you own a premium house, you can go and do this series of quests that give you reputation within the neighborhood, which I thought is a really cool idea. Um, and then when you do the quest, there's, there's a couple of points where they'll give you a housing item. And so one of the items they can get, give you is this um, like little baby bed. So I put that in the middle, again, of the creepy room just because I thought that was funny. <laughs> That's right. Have you seen how large goldfish can get? Okay, so now we're back in the main room and we're looking up and I wanted to point out how big this, this item is and how it fits pretty well in this giant house. Um, so that's a, an item from the Midsummer uh, Festival. Also, there's you, the sharp eyed among you may notice there's a couple of things floating in the air, some other trophies uh, around that. There's a reason for that, and I'll come back to that here in a second. Okay, so here's what I did is we took the stairs and we've come upstairs and now we're at the loft and it's this part of the loft is kind of over the, um, by the front door. We were in a parkour phase. <laughs> at the time when I was decorating this house. And so what I did, let me move my camera out for a second. Hey, you can't see it much better. Um, there are little pieces of furniture that remember again, how you can float things up and down. So I took various pieces of furniture and created a parkour course for people to jump from one piece of furniture to the next. And you'll notice, I don't know if you can tell, but so um, right here is a little set of shelves and, it, and shelves are hard to jump on because it looks like this with like stuff on top and you think, oh, I'll just jump right here. But there's something about it that it, it doesn't 
like it's actually like here is how the thing is built and so you have to jump at just the right angle to get on it so anyway so you start with the the shelf of dishes and then you jump up onto the barrels and then there's a table that's and then a um and then a rug that's floating over the by the front door so you look so you're over like empty space so that's a little scary and then um, another barrel and then there's a carpet that's on top of a table because the um, the bear rug the carpet bear rug sorry um, you could jump through it but if you put a table underneath it you're actually jumping onto the table but it so it looks like you can jump anywhere on the bear rug but you can't you have to jump on the part where the table is um, yeah and then so you just keep jumping and getting higher and higher and higher this is supposed to be the easy parkour of course um, I'm not good at it so I I did, yeah. I can, and there you can see the, I put the names on it so you can see where all the little things are that are floating in the air and it makes kind of like a, a spiral as you go up. <laughs> I had a lot of fun creating that. Um, and here you can see it from uh, a different angle. So right above me are the shelves that you start on and then the barrels are next and so on. So it was hilarious. I think it's funny. All right, so, but I'm terrible at that. So if you, so again, remember when we came in from the front door, we were looking this way and we saw the long tables and there was a big open space uh, up above. Well, now we're looking down from that open space there. And what I did is I created, this, this is where a certain plugin streamer gets his practice is what you're showing us. If you wanna come over to my house, this, is, um, this house is on Evernight. It's, oh, I forget which neighborhood it is though. Um, but it's a mead hall, obviously in the um, uh, in uh, the East Fold Hills, in oh Brer Brer Law, I think it is, because it's that bear kinship. Um, if you want to go and practice, you are welcome to. the The house should be open. Um, and you should be able to go and jump around. So here's what I did: is I made a section with carpets that I floated up into the air. And so you can jump onto the carpet and jump to the next carpet and the next carpet. So that's, that's like my level of parkour. <laughs> that's, that's what I can do. But if you feel like, and that, now that's over the open area though, so it's a little scary looking. But if you wanna try the open area and maybe not try something quite as, well, you wanna try, you don't wanna do the carpet, but you wanna try something a little more advanced alongside the carpets. I do have a bunch of pieces of furniture that are floating, but they're kind of in a line, but you gotta still get the jump right. Here's an interesting fact. The carpets, when as we're looking down on them, we can see them. If you're looking up, they're, it's a one-way mirror. You can look right through the carpets. So when you are standing downstairs and looking up, you do not see the carpets. Fascinating, but it's really crazy because you can see the person sitting on the carpet or standing on the carpet. You just don't see the carpet. It's really wild. Yes, you only see rugs from one side. It's just basic physics. <laughs> so that's pretty cool. So okay, so we've got the the twisty turning car parkour area. We've got this walk walking over that. There you go. You can see it from the other side. So you've got you know your carpet, your carpet, carpet, or you've got the the furniture floating in air that you could jump from one to the next if you are good at that. Um, so over on this side then, over the dais, I created an area where I took all these weird trophies. And this is like your super expert area. I don't know if anybody's actually accomplished this part. Um, I don't even know if it's accomplishable because <laughs> I'm terrible at it, so I didn't do it. Um, but the idea was that you could start with, I think it's the one kind of over by my head, um, and you could jump from one to the next above the dais. So I wish anyone luck who wants to go give that a try. Okay, so now we're gonna go back downstairs. <laughs> and so we looked at the room that was over on the left side. Now we're gonna look over at the room on the right side. And um, again, you've got a lot of separate decorating panels. So uh, I think I may have done this flooring different than the flooring in the other room. Um, so what we did is we came from, again, it's an L shape, so it goes over and then it cuts in. And I um, made a little indoor campfire. Um, and you'll see there's a cart there with a couple of, um, of boxes with it. 
And I had forgotten, I was thinking that that was two pieces of furniture. One was the cart with the item and one was the, the box sitting separately. Because I remember I'd put those together, but then I was looking at it more closely. This is, excuse me, this is three different items. And I remember that cheesemonger's crate took a long time to get it to look right because the edges kept poking out in various ways. Or, and because it's flat and the cart is at an angle that the, the corners didn't you know go right. So. Um, so I just wanted to point out that even things that don't feel like they're going to come together, if you work at it for a while, eventually you can get something and, um, and then check that out. I mean, it just looks like it was built that way. It looks like SSG just put it together that way, which is pretty cool. I love that they give us toys to play with or we can do things like that you know, and make it that way. Okay, so this is, again, I did another theme room. So this is my, um, well, this is my Aragorn room, kind of, you know. Um, this is your, your uh, what, Gondor room then, I guess. Um, so, you know, we've got the, the Midsummer Arch thing, and we've got the Gondorian lights and, and um, things like that. So that was, that was kind of fun to throw that together. Okay, so now we're back in the main room, and we're looking from the front door um, towards the back. So you can see the, the structure at the back. Um, you can almost see things. Yeah, you can see, see there's a, like a line of brown. <laughs> it's because those, um, that's the line of, um, of the furniture that's floating <laughs> in, in midair. So that's hilarious. Oh, then, okay, so now we're turned and we're going down into the basement. So it's a, it's a switchback the staircase. And so when you come out, you into the basement, you start and you come into this space right here. So I thought it was funny. I've got, you know, uh, the rainfall is a new um, decorating item. It's a, it's just a ceiling item, but it was added in with the Rohan housing uh, as an item that you can play with. And so that one cracks me up. So I've got a couple of Mordoreth's mirrors there as well. So, but if you notice there's a, a, a doorway here, if you turn there, you have a series of six rooms down here. Each room has its own decorating panel. So you can do the walls differently, you can do the floors differently, you can do your own lighting in each room. But then there's like three hooks. So there's not, it, you can't decorate it lavishly. Um, eventually I'll go back in and, and redo these rooms. But I was just testing out a whole bunch of stuff. So I got a whole bunch of different lighting, I got a whole bunch of different flooring you know, a whole bunch of wall stuff, and then I ran out of room in my chests, but um, I was playing around with the different looks. So like this one, I made like a little elven space. Um, so we've got, you know, a rug, we've got a bookcase, we've got a chair, and we've got a little reading stand. Um, some reason the lights come out differently on each wall, and I don't think it's supposed to do that. So it's really, it's, it's definitely a lot of trial and error to figure out how to make these rooms have a certain look and I think it is more perhaps that you just have to try different things and come up with something that you like versus try to make something you want to fit the space um, so like for example with this one I was able to come in and do a lot of like this is I think a, a dark like a intense pink fill light and you know we've got the floor is lava and we've got you know some other dark items in here and they seem to the flow well together um, yeah, so I just wanted to show you that like those rooms are all separate and you you can decorate each one separately. Um, but you, you kind of have to steal hooks from each other. And so really you'll probably get one or two well decorated rooms and then the other rooms will be pretty sparse at this point. I don't know, there might be some options in the future for changing things around. But I just, I thought that was uh, really interesting. I experimented and played around with some of that. Okay, so here is another Rohan Eastfold house that I have. And so this is not a mead hall. I don't have any floating rugs in this one. <laughs> um, this is my house on Laurelin. So I have a, a hobbit that this is basically, you know, her house or her and her sister's house. But um, there's a lot of um, stuff that was done inside with her personality in mind. So again, hobbity stuff. So we've got hobnanigans, we've got a mushroom hut. And look at that mushroom hut. I mean, it's, you know, those, those items are huge and it just fits really well in the Rohan um, neighborhood. It will, in any of the premium neighborhoods really, because the yards are so big. 
Also, I love the fact that you can see these snowy mountains behind, right, behind the house. It's just so good. It's really pretty. So again, I've done some snowy stuff with this house. I mean, we've got a snowball field. Uh, we've got, I think, some broken snowmen. The, also, though, um, this is where the chickens went for the winter. So uh, maybe in the summertime, you know, one of the chicken coops will make it back down to, uh, to the Shire. But for now, you know, we've moved the chickens up to, uh, to the house in the mountains. <laughs> and here we've got a snowball field. We've got some uh, broken snowmen. So this is our kind of snowy area. So I'm kind of doing a tour around the back of the, of the house. So keep in mind, this is so cool, that like all of this space is space that's part of my house and part of my house's space. So, and there's a lot of decorating hooks on the outside. Like I said, I think they really took some lessons they learned from Belfalas and said, okay, we need to give you more hooks. <laughs> um, I still struggle with the mead hall and, and, and specifically with the mead hall yard because I want more stuff in the yard. Um, but I think the regular house, um, I'm feeling pretty good about the number of hooks that we have in there. And I know there's a limit, like they can only do so much because then it'll just crash everything and we don't want that. Like I'd rather have fewer hooks and a working game. Um, but you know, who doesn't want more hooks? Okay, so again, Hobbit, lots of food tables. Um, that's the story I'm sticking to it. It also happened that I made a lot of them because I got on a kick with my hunter or with my with my cook who can make these tables and then I um, found that nobody was looking for them and so I ended up with like a dozen of them and so I put them everywhere. <laughs> so that's part of it too. Okay, so then, um, yep, two more food tables and then that is the, um, the, the um, barn for where you can put your horses. So you can see the difference, it looks identical. Um, one is the horse that I'm sitting on, the pony I'm sitting on, and one is the pony that I created into a, um, into a hitching post. Fun thing, fun fact, if you have a mount, um, so for example, if you are a hobbit or a dwarf, that mount will be a pony. If it's a if it's a steed, um, if you are race of man, Bjorning, elf, high elf, you know any of the tall people, it'll be a horse. When you make the hitching post item, it will be the same as what your character has. So I could come back with a character that has the same mount, but with like if I had a high elf, and I could take my high elf and have her make the hitching post, it would be a horse version of that because this is the pony version. So that is really fascinating that the critter, the sorry, the mount, when you make it, it is the same as whatever it is that your character rides, the character who's making it rides. Uh, so I am definitely tempted to, you know, put multiples of the same in some of my, in some of my, uh, my barn or my my uh, hitching post areas because I think that'd be kind of fun. Okay, so let's go inside. So we went with some bright colors here. I was trying to go in for like a grassy look because you know I was thinking Shire and green grass and that sort of thing. So she's got a bunch of uh, food tables. Nom nom nom. Um, we've got yep more food tables and this is kind of like the festive room. So when you first walk in. That was the main room. This is the side room where the second door is, or the first door, depending on your point of view. There's a staircase there, uh, there on the images, to where you can go down into the basement. And it's a full basement. It's the entire ba bottom. Because remember, we're in the hills where we get full basements, but we don't get a barn. So everything that we get to decorate is here in this structure. We don't have a, a second structure with some decorating. Um, OK, she also really likes. Um, festivals and so unintentionally I ended up making like basically a miniature um, spring spring festival maze <laughs> in the house so that was great because I had some hobbits over and they were like oh no I'm lost oh this is amazing and you know it was hilarious <laughs> it was a lot of fun all right and then the next room um, and I'm gonna move my picture out of the way for just a moment uh, I'm really pleased with the way this one turned out because this is um, where I took a lot of the scholar 
room ideas and I brought them together in a way that um, matched with that character's personality. So over on the right side of the screen, you can see there's a, um, a bench. And here, I'll go ahead and there we go. Oh, let me move me again for a second. So you can see, so the middle item is actually something you can get for Figments of Splendor, and it is a scholar's bench. Um, and it's called, I think, called the Herbalist's Bench. Um, yeah, I just, it's so cool um, because it is a actual crafting facility. And that's really unusual to be able to find crafting facilities that you can get for figments. Usually you have to buy them for loader points in the store. So pretty happy about that. And then um, the idea is that she's got books nearby, but she's got mushrooms. She can go out to the um, to the little maze, you know, in the next room and pick some uh, items if she needs to for making her her um, herbalist stuff, for making her scholarly stuff. She's got a pot full of stuff there. She's got bookcases with all sorts of books, um, and uh, yeah, and so yeah, so she can reach behind her and just go grab you know, stuff from the other room. She's got everything she needs right here. And when she's hungry, you know, there's a whole table full of food right behind her. <laughs> so it's everything a Hobbit scholar could possibly need. <laughs> and um, I was able to use, I think, all the hooks from this room, a few hooks from the next room over. Um, I did float some hooks from below, I'm pretty sure. Uh, but for the most part, it's, uh, yeah, so I was able to use hooks from this side of the house, though. So I was pretty pleased how it turned out without making the other rooms look too sparse. So that's not too bad. Speaking of, we're going to go down the stairs, and we have a few kind of like, you know, scary items out of the way so Hobbit doesn't get scared. Now the next room, so we're in a big room here, and then we have kind of like a little mini hallway, and then a large, and then a antechamber room, and then another large room that's underneath the, um, the festival, the festive room. So here's that room that I was talking about that's kind of like the antechamber. And one of the cool things they've been doing is in these Rohan houses is they added in some uh, like, you know, bags of food and, and shelving and, and sort of stuff. Like in the Mead Hall, you can see there's um, there's a place under the stairs, and it's just chock full of this stuff, which is really cool. Um, in here, there's a little bit of it, and I'd forgotten because I had decorated it and hadn't been here in a couple months. Those things that now have the floaty uh, words over them, those are things that I added to these piles. So it blends right in. I'm just, I think that is so cool that the stuff they gave us to play with, like that you can go and buy from the housing supplier and whatnot, matches so well with the stuff that's already in the houses that you would not know that it wasn't already a part of the house, right? So I think that was pretty cool. And I did the same thing in this room, and this is looking back at the other room, as I put those shelves at the bottom of the stairs and added another crate on top in an empty space. Um, so you can, you can do a lot with um, the, the assets, as they're called, that they gave us. OK, so um, now if you go back into the main part of the house and you go up some stairs, you've got this level. And there's a, a I put a breakfast table here, of course. Um, and then you see there's a whole other set of stairs to go up yet another level. I don't think I took a picture up there. I did not. Um, so there's a whole other level up above. Now it's only got like two hooks up there, maybe three. So really what I'll probably do eventually is float those down to this level and make this a little bit more cozy. But um, I just kind of wanted to show you that uh, what some of the things that you could do um, in some of the Rohan housing as well. So here, I'll, I'll leave you with that picture of the, um, the Eastfold house. Or sorry, yeah, Eastfold, Eastfold um, Mead Hall. OK, so. I think it's been like three and a half hours, hasn't it? Almost. Okay. <laughs> so there's my three hour stream on low chore housing. <laughs> so if you have questions, go ahead and bring those up now. Um, so I'll go ahead and talk for just a moment though. As somebody alluded to earlier, there is another set of housing coming, another set of premium housing coming. So over the last I don't know, couple of years, um, SSG has had what I would call like a multi-year arc story arc that has been very dwarf focused.
focused. Um, you know, we've had the War of the Three Peaks and the Gundabad and, you know, and, and all of that going on. And that is coming to a conclusion with the, um, the, the fate of Gundabad, right? Uh, and then they're going to be, they've already said they're going to be moving on to something else, but they haven't said exactly what they're going to be doing, whether it's going to be like, you know, are we going to do some elf stuff? Are we going to do some hobbit stuff? Are we going to be like following Aragorn post-war cleanup? Like, we don't know what's going to happen yet. Um, but they had been teasing some more premium housing. It, excuse me. So, we, so there was a question of, was it going to be, you know, more dwarven stuff because that's where they've been? Or is it going to be something different to kind of, as a palate cleanser, like which way were they going to go? So they, um, it seems like they decided to go kind of like, you know, capstone, finish it off with Erebor housing, uh, you know, can finish, just kind of wrap up this dwarven thing um, with dwarven housing. So this is really exciting in the sense for a number of reasons. One, the, the premium housing we've had so far has been in the Cape of Belfast, which is race of man, and in Rohan, which is race of man. So they had said definitely the next one was not going to be race of man. So that was that was nice because, I mean, we want something different, right? Like we want to run around Lotro, we want to run around Middle Earth and do some Middle Earthing. Um, so you know, so it was like, okay, well, is it going to be hobbits? Is it going to be elves? Is it going to be dwarves? So they went dwarves, and as I mentioned earlier, they um, have gone with a very kind of Wizard of Oz bright green. <laughs> kind of style and um i wonder would it be easy for me to share my screen or would that be hard okay hang on just a second i think i'm going to be able to share a couple of images yeah. that scenario has posted okay, just the tab that you want to share. yeah okay, okay. Okay. Sweet. There we go. Okay. So these are images that Scenario, Scenario is a, thank you, is an SSG um, developer, works, you know, who's, he works at SSG. He's, um, oh, I don't need the server text. Okay. Cool beans. Um, so yeah, so he works for SSG. He's one of the developers, and he has like uh, housing is like his his purview, um, and so he's the one who's been like adjusting hooks and because um, we used to have like small yard and large yard, and now they're all just yard. So that's really cool, um, things like that. So now you have more flexibility. Same thing with furniture, right? There used to be large furniture, small furniture, thin furniture. Um, now it's all just furniture. You've got a lot more flexibility. Love it. So. He is the one who's been building this new housing. And so you can see we've got that Wizard of Oz green that I was talking about going on. Uh, there's some crazy stuff though. So like this, I believe, is a house back here. Um, Cause you have, you don't have yards per se because it's, it's all carved out from inside of a mountain. Um, so you have balconies and that you decorate as if it was a yard. Um, so that's where you got like this tree here and this tree here. Um, let me see. I know there's, yeah. Oh yeah. So he's, when he showed, um, the live preview where he was riding around, he was, they were still working on how you can get from one place to another, like where the bridges are and that sort of thing. So I don't know how OSHA approved this place is gonna be. Like, I don't know if you can just fall right off of there and end up down here. This is a river, a river of gold. <laughs> because why not? Um, but yeah, so it's all very angular. It's all very, you know, very dwarven. Um, it definitely has some of that, you know, those giant carvings like you see in Moria, pretty dang cool. Um, yeah, so I think we are looking at some more balconies are off to the sides there. Um, let's see, what did he say? Oh, I think I've moved it. Um, there's, there's X number of houses that are like the regular houses. Then there's gonna be one house that's a geode house, 
where you can basically live inside a geode and then they're bringing back kin housing because remember for Rohan there was no kin housing it was all you know individual um, character houses um, and you got that travel skill we had the mead hall but that was again another house that you could just buy um, so here we're getting the going back to there's going to be a kin house um, let's see so I see a set of stairs here oh and there's a gate so they're adding he's adding a whole bunch of new stuff that's going to be coming out with this oh my gosh Avery says they tested it the geode house has water inside the house where you can go fishing like there's not going to be a single geode house left like there's going to be just a hundred neighborhoods with just the geode house purchased like <laughs> it's going to be crazy so so one thing they're adding is there's a gate that is in front of your so that that right there is a gate and you can set permissions whether or not people are allowed to go through the gate or not so right now like if you go into a shire neighborhood you're just riding across yards like crazy like nobody stops you Erebor housing you can prevent people from even entering your yard by setting your gate permissions you'll just buy the gold river <laughs> and then you just buy all the houses yeah you're not getting one because you never see daylight again I know see it does seem very dark in here and I don't know if it's going to be this dark or if that's just kind of like the initial you know as they're putting on the polishing touches and stuff um that might be the way to the kin house I'm not 100 percent sure there's a video uh when scenario does his strolls there's a video where at the end of his stroll he did Erebor housing i think it was that one um so that would be the thing to go look and see oh my gosh look at are those staircases or is that just looks like i can't imagine spending so much time going up these if that's stairs but it's very sweeping right like it's very grand there's a lot of grandeur in um in the Erebor housing let's see what else we got there you go you can see the 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 river of gold again and there you can see a gate into somebody's yard um so I think there's probably another balcony up here that probably connects to this house down here yeah <laughs> no no handrails tons of stairs no handrails <laughs> you can tell it's dwarven housing they're so bad about that um let's see what else we got okay so here we are on one of the upper levels and you can see we've got these kind of geodes sneaking their way in adding some lighting there we've got like a dwarf we've got dwarven statues as you go along um so man if you're into dwarven housing you are going to be in heaven so yes yeah, so we've got like little geodes along the way lighting Get, providing some lighting I don't know if there's gonna be more of those to provide more light but here you can see those giant statues that we saw before and yeah you've got this long procession here and then you've got your side shoots um, I think to get to different people's houses so I don't know how much of the neighborhood we're seeing here but we may be seeing a majority of the neighborhood just from this angle um, Wow look at that has a massive structure that because I think that's a balcony back there and so which means there might be one up there so that might be kin house stuff um yeah these are just numbered it just says airborne housing area you know and it says one two three four five twelve etc so it doesn't give us a lot of detail in terms of like you know which house we're looking at um but yeah oh yeah and then there's um a checkerboard area this might be in the middle of the town where basically you could play you know character chess you just have to have enough people to stand around Ah, I see a window Cranesville. Okay, so we're probably near the center of the the shopping district. That's good. Um, homestead provisions. Okay, so this is going to be the center, you know, where you're going to find your um, task boards and, and all of that. Cool. Um, oh, okay, okay. I think I'm seeing some um, was it auctioneers probably. Awesome. So yeah, we're definitely hitting the center of town sort of stuff. There's your vault keeper. Nice. I've, I'm so used to Wenda Cranesville that I don't, you know, I now have all that in my pocket. I hardly ever look for these people anymore. 
Um, let's see what else we got here. Okay, so there we've got probably your um, reforging people, maybe. All right, and some more uh, of the uh, river of gold that you can swim in. I can't remember if I've mentioned that, but you can swim in. He was doing that on stream. It was hilarious. Aw, cute, like a little sitting area and a little, uh, oh, so that makes me wonder if it's gonna be like Rohan where the crafting facilities are in the center of town. It got really interesting because once that popped up, a lot of people stopped looking for them as much and just did their their crafting in their Rohan, at, at the Rohan house. Ooh, look at that. This has got to be somebody's yard, right? We've got a table. Oh, I bet that looks like we've got a crafter. Interesting. We got a big tree standing here. Hmm. It did seem like you said that there was um, like a kind of a pro progression through where you've got some more, like some more nature that comes in. Okay, now we're back to the beginning. Uh, I was hoping we'd get a picture of the geode house. Hmm. Let me see. Oh, wow. That's going to do that. Um, so this is on the, um, the Deco de Mille, um interview that I posted earlier. That um, That's where these pictures are that I was just sharing. Let's see. Sorry for the ads there. I don't have this on an ad-free page. And da 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 Oh, okay, so here you go. So here's some pictures of the base houses. Um, they're a great entry point into the neighborhood, offering a full suite of housing features and a more affordable cost and beautiful waterfront views of the Golden Horde. Okay, so this is your basic house, as it were. Um, yeah, that's, that's so small, goodness. <laughs> we got some stairs over there. Got some alcoves. Looks like we go into other rooms. Got some, look like some stairs maybe going that way. Here's another room. Top floor, it says. Entrance. Okay, so there you go. And there's your gate. And so this will be your balcony here, your yard, as it were. That's coming into your, through your gate. That's cool. Yep, so this is base yard at the entrance. So again, this is still your yard. So you'll be decorating this as if it's like outdoor space. So you could like stick a Christmas tree there or something, that'd be funny. Put your snowman, put your broken snowman there. And then this was base interior. Okay, so we saw these, all right. So that's the basic one. And then dun, 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 dun. the geode house, here you go. A unique offering in the neighborhood. Geos, the geode house of Iron Front Road is a special version of the base house. So here's your opportunity to live inside a geode. In addition to a unique yard, some additional in unique interior spaces. Um, it's near the craft services and social spaces in the neighborhood. Hmm. Making it a great space for avid crafters or party hosts. <laughs> so there you go, look at that. That is bright. That is something, isn't it? There's your gate, there's your entrance. Wow. Oh my. Wow. Goodness. Wow. I mean, right? Like, that is just intense. Oh, there's the water where you go fishing. <laughs> that is pretty cool. Well, I hope one of my kinship members at least gets one of these because I would go visit. Oh, this says top floor. This doesn't have a title. And then that's probably inside the house. Okay. Wow, that is wild. Well, don't trip while walking down the hall. You poke your eye out. <laughs> yeah, I'm kidding. All right, and then we have deluxe houses. So we've gone from so we've we've gone back to having the smaller houses, which probably have a smaller price point. Mm. There were some price points that were on the um, the bull roar server, and some people grabbed those. And uh, I did not grab those for this um, stream. But okay, so the deluxe houses offer multiple levels of outdoor living with two different levels of yard, an exterior balcony and an exterior balcony. So you've got three basically, all overlooking the worm hoard and the hall itself. Those familiar with deluxe styles of housing and other premium neighborhoods will find a lot to like in these homes, okay? 
So here we have one of the balcony, the balcony for the deluxe house. Another view from the, of the balcony. The interior basement. Another view of the interior basement. Another view, okay. Oh, nice. Deluxe interior middle. So it looks like we've come up from the basement and we're on our way up to the next one. Deluxe interior middle. Okay, big room, really big room. Deluxe interior middle still and still. Okay, looks like I saw the front door. <clears throat> All right, now it says deluxe interior top floor. Oh, maybe that was just a, a portal to your top floor. Is that crazy if you have to take a portal to get from one floor to another? That would be wild. Or maybe it's just a way to, oh, maybe it's a way to get out to the outdoor balconies. Okay, this is, this is the deluxe lower yard. And this is the deluxe yard entrance. And again, we have the gates thing going on. Yeah. Wow, deluxe yard entrance, it says still. That's pretty cool looking. Yeah, haystacks and stuff. And back to the balcony. Okay, so we saw those. All right, so that's your deluxe home. And then I think, yeah, here's the kinship house. So anchoring the northern end of the neighborhood, the kinship hall commands an impressive view of the homesteads. The most, the most fully features of the properties, kinships can customize the exterior yards, four exterior yards in total, and balcony with their own music and cave ambiance effects. Um, another thing that they're looking to introduce with this, as my understanding, is a um, a day file feature where it's some sort of a hook that you get for your house that goes onto your house. And I think it's only going to be in premium houses to start, um, where it changes the, the day, like time of day, kind of weather, that sort of thing um, at your house. So you could have like, um, you know, Belfalos Shore, 5 p.m. or, you know, 7 p.m. sunset or something like that. Like something very specific, I think, is how that's going to work. Um, let's see. Okay, so in the upper yard of the Ken House gives a view of the worm horde at water level while those seeking a more natural experience, there it is, can enjoy the Dale Land Gardens or Blue Stone Courtyard of the upper levels. So here we go. So here's the Ken House entrance main yard, more main yard, yeah, there you go, you've got waterfront property, gold, gold waterfront property, and there we go, there we get into the more natural, the nature creeping in, that's what I was thinking of, okay, so this is at the Kin House that you get the, the nature and trees and stuff, that is wild, this is still, this is all still the entrance, it says, Goodness, and the main the main yard that is something. Wow. Okay, now we're into the basement of the Kin House. So sizable basement. Could put a lot in there, that's for sure. Now we're onto the main floor. Oh, that's cute, like a little standing or sitting area. Man, could you imagine the parties, dwarven parties in that place? Main floor. You could reenact the assault on Karn Doom. <laughs> the main floor. Here's some more main floor. Interior. Okay, so that's that looks similar to the uh, deluxe house. Kin interior top floor. Looks like we're going up to. Oh wow, that's pretty. Look at that. That was really nice. It's funny when he was <coughs> um, putting this together before he'd shown any of the pictures. Scenario did tease that. People who have a kin house, because you can only own one kin house, right? That a kin can only own one kin house. And he did tease that there will be people who will gladly give up their kin house in order to come and buy the one that he was putting together. I can, um, I can see some of the uh, attractiveness of some of this. Wow, look at that. That's pretty. That's very pretty. So another thing that he's introducing with this is um, exterior music. This is the lower yard, it says. So you will be able to put music on your house that plays in your yard, um, not just on the inside of your house. 
So that's fascinating. I don't know anything about whether it's going to be the same music. Oh, this says um, balcony. This is the Kin Yard balcony. So I don't know if it'll be the same music as you buy elsewise, or if it's like a different kind of music hook and it'll be a different kind of music. I don't know. It'll be interesting to see. Kin Entrance Main Yard. Okay, we're, we're back to the beginning. Okay. So, wow. That is, that is certainly something, isn't it? Okay, and then they go into a, a Q&A from there. So, all right. Well, I think we are about to finish up here. So, um, I don't didn't see any questions pop up. I know maybe we're all just like <laughs> distracted by the uh, <laughs> distracted by the Arab or housing. So that's gonna be that's really interesting to me as well because. Um, so the first housing came out, what was it, 2007? And then the first premium housing was 2016, and then 2020, and now it's gonna be 2022. So that makes me think that it could be as early as like 2024 that we get the next premium housing. Who knows? It's hard to say. It's hard to say what they'll do. Um, but I do have hopes that it will be either Elvin uh, premium housing or Hobbit premium housing. I mean, I could absolutely see them going and doing a whole story, Hobbit storyline and introducing Hobbit housing. That'd be pretty dang cool. So we'll have to see, we'll have to see. All right, well, I have had a lot of fun discussing housing with you all today. Um, I hope you have all had a good time being here as well. And, um, I want to thank you all for coming along and um, also a huge thank you to everybody who um, who donated in the um, Extra Life stuff because um, that was kind of what spurred me to do this is I um, uh, I was encouraged to uh, to go for the 500 level asking people to donate up to 500 and people did and um, I said if people did then I would do three hours of streaming on Lotro Housing and uh, Maybe I'll have to do it again because I didn't do three hours. I did like almost four. <laughs> I'm kidding. I kid. All right. Um, well, thank you all for coming along and joining me today. And uh, hopefully I'll see you again. Uh, I stream on Thursdays over on the Lotro stream uh, official Lotro Twitch channel on Thursday nights, Heart of a Hobbit. And uh, so if you, if you had fun with me here, uh, come by for a shorter two-hour dose on a Thursday and uh, we'll have fun together. And you can always derail me with um, questions about, um, about housing, as, as you can tell. All right. <laughs> um, oh, I know, right? Hobbit rumors. Can't wait for river hobbit housing in the shells of long dead giant tortoises. I mean, that'd be kind of cool. Hashtag Hobbit, River Hobbit rumors. <laughs> yes, we P4 likes to start lots of River Hobbit rumors. It's pretty funny. All right. Thanks, everybody. I'm going to get going, and I will see you on Thursday. All right. As I say over on the others, um, I do encourage everyone to stay connected to the Hobbit side of their heart while you're out and about. Thanks so much, everybody. Have a great night. All right. Bye-bye.